All right, guys, before we get started with tonight's show, I got to thank the awesome Super Chatters from last week's episode, starting with DJ's Family of Nerds. If you guys haven't checked out DJ's channel, guys, he is a phenomenal creator. He's actually pivoted to doing movie review parodies. It's incredible. You guys got to check it out. You won't be disappointed. Uh, next up, we got the Overthorian Alliance from Two Perspectives. Uh, Luke and Jacob, they make some great content over there. Some great uh, content over there. Uh, definitely check out their channel, guys. All of these channels are down in the link in the description below. And lastly, I got to talk to Zach Attack Reviews, a friend of ours of the channel. Uh, he sent in a very generous super chat during our Members Talk Live uh, show that we do on Saturdays for the members. So thank you so much for that. Thank you guys so much for all of your generous donations towards the channel. It is truly what keeps me being able to do this every week. It goes a long way. It means a lot. Thank you guys so much. If you couldn't tell, this is being done live because I just, it's been a whirlwind of, of, a, of a couple of weeks, guys. So I just, I didn't get around to pre recording any video, but we are going to talk about the Oscars, our favorite moments from the Oscars. We're going to talk about the fact that Nev Campbell is indeed coming back for Scream 7. We're going to talk about National Treasure 3, whether or not it's going to happen. We'll, we'll see what some comments were made from Nicolas Cage. And the Batman, the Batman 2, to be more specific, has unfortunately been delayed by a year. We're going to talk about all that and more because we've got a very special guest once again coming back to the show. So excited to have him back. Please help me welcome Zach Guller. Hey, -o! hey man. Let's go, man. I was so stoked that Zach had asked me back on, but you know, I... <laughs> anytime he messages me and he's like hey zach you want to come on the show and do a live stream i'm like we'll, we'll figure it out we will figure it yes. out with as busy as my schedule is we're gonna freaking do it i will make time for you so i'm Absolutely. stoked to be here man i i honestly i appreciate that so much man. i appreciate your time i'm always honored to have you on the show you like i always mention this whenever you're on but like you're the uh -oh. first like connection to youtube i had like oldest friend on youtube for sure and we always go like a like a couple months like just like not really engaging or talking because we're both so busy and then we just like have mm -hmm. to come did you know that um it's gonna be i think in october three years Really? Of us knowing each other? Yeah. Holy shit, man. Our first collab <laughs> on your channel was 2021. Wow. Yeah. It uh, was that the that was the friends video. That was the friends video. Yeah. yeah. Our favorite friends mm -hmm. episodes. Yeah. No, that was awesome with our homie Amanda, of course. Yeah, I haven't talked yes. to her in a hot minute either. But um, yeah, dude. It's <laughs> yeah, it's whirlwind three years. It flies by, crazy? but yeah like yeah. i was sending you i was sending you the other day uh the thumbnail picture i was like do you want to update this because mine is two years old <laughs> so <laughs> no it's funny because like the headshots that i use for like auditions for theater and what have you i took that before the pandemic and like it's the same headshot that you see in my profile picture believe it or not i took that at my school back in 2020 oh, okay. and then shutdown happened and i was like this is a fine headshot i don't need to update it yet <laughs> i don't think so but yeah I, th I feel like once i uh once i turn 30 i feel like i'll start considering it again but yeah every yeah. decade you got every, update every every decade every decade. <laughs> every decade get a new headshot yeah no, that, i mean i gotta i gotta sure. update my logo too i mean look at me i'm i'm 20 i'm 22 23 there i think and now i'm 25 <laughs> I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be 26. Uh, I don't. I don't look that fresh faced anymore. <laughs> Making me feel old, man. <laughs> Making me feel old. I was, yeah, I was around 23 when I started doing this. I'm 27 now. It's been a good four years. So, wild, wild stuff. Yep. Time sure does fly, but mm -hmm. time is going to fly tonight with this chat because you oh, guys yeah. are here. You're here to talk with us. We are so excited to have you here. So let's jump in this chat because some of you guys have been here. I got 12.41 p.m. So this is like seven hours ago that you joined in here. Uh, 80s kid from the 90s, dude. Thanks for jumping in here so early. Um, what's good, Zach and Zach? It's been a minute since I've been in the chat. Hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, it's been a minute since we've seen you here, man. We missed you, and we're glad to see you back. Welcome. Thank you for spelling my name correctly, too. Yeah, it helps me out, too. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever yeah. I, I have uh, Zach attack on, we both spell our names with an H. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or so it gets a little confusing. <laughs> Just call each other by our last name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it gets to that point eventually. Mm -hmm. 
uh dakota man movies what's going on man he says what are you guys thoughts on the title for venom the last dance i would love to hear your thoughts on this man because i saw that the other day you and i are both not very big fans of the venom movies Mm -mm. so uh what do you think of this title i'll get uh it should be called venom three movies too old um because those (laughs) movies just feel like heavy products to me it feels like sony just grasping at straws i'm not looking forward to watching that movie and like we still have freaking like after dealing with madam web and all the controversy surrounding madam web like i'm not ready for that movie i'm not ready for craven the hunter i know craven the hunter is not going to be as good as he was in the video game that's for sure but oh yeah yeah (laughs) not not looking forward to it but at least we know that this is the last we're going to have to deal with this version of venom but well i mean we'll see we'll see what they i i don't believe that it's the last one they'll ever do I've been seeing that going around like people think it's the last one. I don't think it's going to be the last one. I don't think that Sony can let this be the last one because it's the only thing in their universe that's kind of working at the moment. Please let it be the last one. Dude, (laughs) look, I'm going to go into Venom The Last Dance hoping that it's good. I I don't have much enthusiasm for it because of the other two movies um, and Madam Web and Morbius um and all the other stuff that sony's put out in this universe mm-hmm. as well, far as like the title itself um it kind of fits with the movies because it's kind of lame uh in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> I, just just in, i know i'm offending a lot of venom fans right now and i get it there's a lot of people who love venom i'm happy for you i can see why you love it it's just not my cup of tea um yeah. but yeah the, the last dance it, it's very appropriate for this already goofy doesn't take itself seriously franchise so not rated r nothing like that (laughs) oh wait oh no they've already confirmed that it's not gonna be rated r have they or have they gotten the rating yet yeah don't be surprised viewers if this is not rated r because sony just doesn't learn they don't learn from their mistakes well craven the hunter to be fair is rated r if i remember correctly well that's good that's good at least um i'm not holding out high hope for that one either like for all intents and purposes morbius should have been rated r but they didn't do that (laughs) did not do that but yeah uh the lasers in here what's going on man Uh, i said zach attack thought i was joe russo (laughs) how did you feel about that yeah um (laughs) i had zach attack on last time and he looked at his profile picture and he thought he was joe russo (laughs) see sorry laser now i can't unsee that it I is can't hard to see that. It is yeah. hard to unsee. Uh, but you know what? Joe Russo is a very good looking man. So you should be yeah. uh, you should be thrilled. Yeah. And thanks for being movies. here, man. Uh the laser says John Cena just did OnlyFans. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that for sure. Oh boy. Uh the laser says Zach's guests are always named Zach. <laughs> but hey, I'm not complaining. This guy looks cool. Yeah, he's yeah. cool, man. His he's down in the description as well, dude. Definitely go check out his channel. Subscribe, give him some love and support. He deserves it. He on he the road to 2000, baby. Yeah, man. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. Look at that. And what what do you uh plug your channel a little bit? What do you what are you doing at the moment? Because I know you do a lot of build-up reviews for movies. Are you doing Ghostbusters at this point, or did you do that already? Um, so I've reviewed the original Ghostbusters for last year's Halloween special already. I've already reviewed Afterlife when that came out. I'm not doing like a whole Ghostbusters playlist. I'm just gonna do Frozen Empire when that comes out. Okay. Um and I will I will tell you that I I do have a couple of anniversary reviews in the pipeline. I want to review Collateral coming up soon because that turns mm. 20 years old um i would like to review big hero 6 also very soon because that's 10 years old this year if Oof. you can believe that yeah <laughs> if you can oh, believe no. that that's yeah. 10 years old i watched that movie on my 18th birthday i remember it like it was yesterday it was wow it was so fun but it's nuts isn't it 2014 that a great is crazy. year for films Mm-hmm. Why don't we ever get another one of those? I mean, I think they did some Baymax shorts on Disney Plus, but we never got an official nope. they sequel just did, or anything like that. They just did an expansion in California Adventure where they turned a part of that amusement park into uh, San Francisco, and they have like themed foods centered around Big Hero Six, and you can meet Baymax over there. It's a uh, it's a cute little area. No rides in That's there, cool. but yeah, huh? Yeah, well, I mean happy anniversary to big hero six then my goodness i can't believe that i know right yeah of course i got all the new releases coming out too like ghostbusters uh what's coming out this week i'm gonna watch love lies bleeding tomorrow that looks amazing Mm. i can't wait to review that so yeah 
Yeah. And you just well, finished the uh, Kung Fu Panda playlist, right? You just did all the Kung Fu Panda movies. Yes. Yeah. That was a lot of fun to put together. And I can announce, by the way, Zach, for the 20th anniversary of Shrek 2, I'm going to review all four of them. I'm going to nice. review all four of them. So, yeah, they're yep. putting that back in theaters. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes me so happy. Talk about old. I've never so seen happy. that in theaters. Mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. probably five. <laughs> I was like five at the time when I saw that in theaters. Hey, chat, is Shrek one or two better? I need to prove a point. Thank you. Ooh, <laughs> I, I'll tell you right now, I think two. Thank I you. Think I've always thought two. Let's prove a point here. <laughs> uh, Dakota, my movies goes thoughts on the new Inside Out 2 trailer. Funny you ask. I was actually just looking at your comment and I watched it right before we went live. <laughs> it was so funny because I joined his uh I joined his stream and I just hear like this weird, like this weird dialogue going on in the background. And I'm like, what could he be watching right now? Yeah, and then out I hear of context. the context. <laughs> and then I hear the word headquarters and I'm like, oh, it's the Inside Out 2 trailer. I will yeah. I will tell you, Dakota, I don't watch trailers because I still have PTSD from Batman v Superman. So I try to stray away from them unless <laughs> I'm at the movie theater early. Then I'll watch the trailers, but I don't go out of my way like outside the movie theater to watch them. I liked it. I thought it was cute. Um, it's exactly what I want to see from more Inside Out and the inclusion of embarrassment and and all these new emotions I thought was great. So I'm, I'm excited for the movie. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to relate so much to anxiety, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave Show, what's going on, man? Thanks for joining us. He says, it's naked John Cena. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, not to give away my favorite moment from the Oscars, but there's a reason why that's kind of <laughs> been we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. We'll I'm talk sure. about that. Uh, Age from 90 says, thoughts on us getting a sequel for Ready Player One. I'm super excited for that movie. I was until I read that Steven Spielberg will not be directing. He'll be producing, which as we all know from a history of Michael Bay Transformers movies, Steven Spielberg producing means nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I mean, as long as long as you don't have Michael Bay involved in this one as the director, then yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. You know, I could, I could see that being a possibility. I could see that happening. Michael Bay directing it. I'm not, I don't think he will, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the laser says, I just got done making three Inside Out 2 videos on the book covers, uh, character posters, and new footage. So hyped. Are you guys hyped? I mean, you didn't watch the trailer, man, but you, you if I remember correctly, you love the first Inside Out. I do. It's one yeah. of my favorite Pixar movies, not named Finding Nemo. Uh, there's days where I think it is my favorite Pixar movie, and then I remember Finding Nemo exists. So um, that one... I mean, I'm hoping it's as good as the original, but I'm not holding out too much hope. But then again, at the same time, Toy Story 2 is better than Toy Story 1. Just throwing that out there. But we'll I agree. see. Yeah. I, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think the. Well, now they have four and four is not my favorite. But I just when it was a trilogy, I thought each installment was better than the last. Mm. I put four. I put four just after. I, I go Toy Story 3, 2, 4, and then 1. That's my ranking for them. Two, three, four. Oh, you think four is better than one? Okay. I think four. I, I enjoy four a little bit more than I enjoy one. Ooh. Well, I will tell you, I'm going to be reviewing that series this year as well. So <laughs> we'll get ready for Toy Story 5. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, help me. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Are you excited for Toy Story 5? No. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Not in the slightest. With the way Toy Story 4 ended, it's like we're done. We're done. How about come up with some original ideas like Elemental? I Here's mean, the funny thing, though. That's exactly what we were saying after Toy Story 3. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. That's true. That's true. But then Toy Story 4 went and proved everybody wrong and justified its existence. But I don't know how Toy Story 5 can dig itself out of that hole. Yeah, so. it's going to be tricky, but we'll mm-hmm. see what they can do with it. Uh, Toxic Gamers in here. What's going on, Toxic Gamer three three one? Thanks for joining us, my friend. Says, hey guys, how y'all days been? I had a good day today. How was your day, man? Uh, I would say my day was pretty good. Just had some sloppy joes for dinner. Those were pretty filling. So yeah, and now I'm doing a live stream with my buddy. Awesome, man. Good days. Uh, Toxic Gamer says uh, he created you. Oh God! In the <laughs> WWE 2024, and I was wondering, what do you want your finisher to be? Uh, <laughs> welcome to the lineup, man. <laughs> uh, oh God, what do I want my finisher to be? Um, I don't know. I don't, uh, 
<sighs> screw it crossroads i don't know <laughs> Crossroads. <laughs> yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah, we can call it the. Uh, I, I, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Yeah, I'm just. I have not bought that game yet. I will. I will. But I just. Yeah, you're the designated uh, wrestling fan here. I I know nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Toxie what else goes on to say, "What's a movie that got canceled that you wish you could have seen?" At the moment, I'm thinking Coyote versus Acme. But I'm hoping yeah. that that'll get turned around. <laughs> how about uh, how about Bad Girl? Bad Girl. Yep. Yeah. Spider Man no, Four. Sam Raimi Spider Man Four technically was was it was it was gonna happen. It got canceled. I mean that led to Andrew Garfield. That led to Tom Holland. That led to Spider Man in the MCU. But still, I would have loved to have seen a history with a Spider Man Four. Hmm. That's another one that got canceled. I can't think of any other. It's off the top of my head. Um, that Batman Beyond movie looked pretty cool. It the, did concept art that got canceled. It did, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, I I'm thinking of more TV shows that got canceled uh, yeah. that I'd rather see the finish up. I am still bitter, Zach, about how iCarly wrapped up and how that was canceled <laughs> after they left us on a damn cliffhanger. <laughs> like we don't even get to see it's <laughs> yeah. It's the it's the rules of the universe. We just cannot find out about their mom. <laughs> obviously, no, obviously that's what's happening here. <laughs> we can't see Carly and Freddie get married. Damn it! <laughs> Look, I think that reboot was a big fumble, in my opinion. I don't think it was really very good. I yeah, I, I I'm very vocal on the channel, man. I I fair enough. I'm not a big fair fan enough. of it. I think it's. I just I just don't think that it's written well and I don't think it has the same Yeah. In the same way it, it, it feels like they wanted to grow it up, but in by trying to, they made it even more juvenile and immature, and it just didn't feel it they felt were, like they were always acting. It felt like they were always just it didn't feel real to me. I never could buy into it, and I didn't think it was very funny either. Do you but feel like every, it was it was written like two broke girls? No, I think it was written like a modern day Disney Channel sitcom, but they got to say oh, the B word and they got to drink booze. That's how so, I think it was written. So two broke girls, basically. <laughs> yeah, just cringy, <laughs> just cringy. But um, every season after after season one, there, there was always one episode or two episodes that I was like, okay, I like that. like when they brought back uh, Granddad, that was mm-hmm. awesome because that felt very consistent with the themes of, of some of the episodes in the past. So I really liked that one. Mm. Um. I did like when they got Carly and Freddie together and they kind of addressed because one thing that this is going to get like really deep into the (laughs) Carly lore, but you got me here. So this is what's going to happen. If you want to call it lore. When I, well, when I was a kid, there was that episode where Freddie saved Carly and then Carly fell in love with him. And then he was like, look, when the whole hero thing that I, like I saved your life wears off, then we can get together. And I waited and I waited and I waited and it never happened and then when they addressed that in the new reboot where he where they were like hey you know what like no one's calling you a hero anymore and they had that moment where they got together and they addressed everything i was like this is very almost like therapeutic <laughs> for me like this feels like it's it is healing a childhood wound so I, I will say though it did have one of my biggest pet peeves especially in sitcoms like that where they have pictures but they're clearly screenshots from episodes that no yeah. one could have taken. <laughs> I hate that. That, that was is such a huge, huge plot I was like, how did you how did you manage to get those? Unless you managed to break the fourth wall. And Freddie yeah. was like, okay, yeah, no, okay. The camera people were there the whole time. Like, and oh, I'm Carly just gonna... sitting on Freddie's bed when he was sick. Take and it's these like screen caps, taking pictures. It was it was that always pulls me out. It happens a lot. It happened also in Fast Ten. They had promotional oh, footage from Furious 7 as pictures, and they had like actual movie footage from the first I biggest pet peeve in movies. I hate that so much. Yeah. Well, I'm allowed to use those screen caps for my editing, but actual movies are not allowed to use them. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. Anyways. Um, yeah, every time I currently would end a season, I'd be like, okay, I'm done. And then I'd be like, okay, let's just check out the next one. And then I'd, I'd watch the whole thing. I'd come out disappointed, but there'd be one or two things I liked in it. Season three was probably their best season. Even though I didn't mm-hmm. fully like it, I do think it was probably their best season. Cool. And when they introduced the mom, I was like, ah, damn it, I'm coming back for four. 
and now it's not happening and <laughs> it's unfortunate for them because especially because it happened during the strikes that's what i hate the most for them yep they never got a final goodbye they never really got closure it was just like we're out of work and then we don't have work to go back to poor that nathan was, poor nathan yeah. Cress, man yeah that was sucky that was very sucky mm-hmm we got a super chat in here, by the way, from Movie Reviews with Ryan Lee, one of our beloved channel members as well. What's going on, Hell, man? Thank yeah. you for being here. Uh, he that. says, if you could only watch one director's movies for the rest of your life, who would you choose? Honestly, it's the cliche answer, but I'm going Steven Spielberg, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I pick Spielberg, I still get to watch Jurassic Park. I still get to watch Jaws. I still get to watch Catch Man. Me If You Can. I still get to watch... Um, oh, why am I blanking? Oh, it's, uh, Saving Private Ryan. I still get to watch Saving Private Ryan. I still get to watch... I get to watch a lot of great stuff if I pick Spielberg, uh, Spielberg still. So, I'm going I, I I hate to be a copycat and say Spielberg also for that same reason. Because yeah. Jurassic Park, you got Jaws in there. You got Jaws, uh, yeah oh my god i mean close second i mean i could say christopher nolan also because you have best picture winner oppenheimer in there now um that's true rob reiner is another one that i feel like i could just rewatch all of his movies over and over again uh you have the princess bride which is one of my most rewatched movies ever stand by me is an amazing Ooh. film misery is one of the best thrillers ever made when harry met sally is one of the funniest rom-coms out there like his filmography is pretty underrated, man. Don't overlook him. <laughs> that's that's very true. And that's the thing, too, is, is you want someone with variety, right? Because, mm -hmm. like, if you pick someone like Tarantino, like, yeah, amazing movies, mm -hmm. they're all kind of heavy and violent. And sometimes, you know, you want to go from a Jaws and you want to go to Ready Player One. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know. Once you see like the technical pattern of a Tarantino movie, you can't unsee it. It's like stylistic yeah. soundtrack choices, like over the top gore, just heavy violence and witty dialogue, razor sharp. Like you just can't unsee that. Yeah. But, and I yeah, think Spielberg I, just has more E.T. He did E.T. Like you get, mm -hmm. you get family friendly, you get action. He's he's the clear pick. It's, yeah, it's hard to choose someone else. I feel like the only genre that's missing is uh, horror, unless you count Jaws as a horror movie. But some people do. Some people yeah. do count that as a horror movie. Mm -hmm. Plus, you even get a musical. You get a uh, you get a uh, West Side Story in there. Yep, yep. So you even you get sure a, an awesome musical. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's hard to go any other way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see. We'll take a couple more, and then we'll get into our first topic here. Um, see here we've got nathan's random movies what's going on nathan thanks for joining us man says yeah. uh, hey zach and zach what have you guys seen for the first time recently i saw poor things wrath of man mortal kombat 2021 lights out 2000 that's a good one that's an underrated one lights out uh yeah. moulin rouge apollo 13 Die Hard 2 and roadhouse 1989 nice dude <laughs> you've been watching some good stuff <laughs> What have, I, what have you watched recently? Um, Pretty much all the new releases that were out on my channel. Kung Fu Panda 4, Doom yep. 2, of course. This was the first time watched. I actually saw that twice that opening weekend. Nice. It's an amazing movie. I tried um, to make it work. I couldn't make it work. I really wanted to go see it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's so incredible. So much better than the first movie in every way. Oh, um, yeah, I agree. Ricky Stanicki was just a dumb comedy. Oh, I enjoyed that. I I, <laughs> I, I I didn't like that one. <laughs> really? No. Oh, man. I I, I did, found some enjoyment in it. It should have been funnier, but I didn't hate it. Which like mm. I I on my review I gave it a week not recommend because there were mm -hmm. moments, but not enough that I think you should spend two. It was two hours. It was yeah. Too, it was too long. It was way two too long. hours. Way too long. You didn't. Nathan didn't like poor things. How dare you? Oh, <laughs> how dare you? Poor things is incredible. <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, it's like it I is... did not like poor things. It was an well, uncomfortable watch, and it was kind of disgusting once you realized the lead character is basically a child being irresponsible. Good performances, though. It's that, about I, discovery. discovery. I have heard that criticism, though. I have heard that criticism. I haven't Which seen it. Fair. But... Which is fair. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily Bella being irresponsible, but it's more so her being educated about like mm. that sort of thing that that's not necessarily how i saw it but i just it's a technical marvel i thought 
And the fact that it's basically like a Frankenstein in reverse where the deformed guy is the one putting the monster together, if you will. Um, I thought it was incredible. I thought Emma Stone's win was well-deserved. So if you don't like it, it, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's a, uh, it's an acquired taste, certainly. And the subject matter is certainly not going to be on everybody's radar, but I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed poor things. Yeah. I think the recent things I've watched are Ricky's to Nikki damsel. Did you check out damsel? Oh, I've been meaning to, but I've gotten so busy around the house. I might, I might turn that on after, uh, after we get off the stream here. But yeah, don't expect um, anything amazing. But mm-hmm. I liked it. I thought it, I thought it was a decent little movie on Netflix. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and, got a good cast in it too. Yeah, and the uh, the premise surprised me because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even see a trailer for this thing. It so, looks cool. It looks it, like a cool movie. I enjoyed it. I, I, it's not getting the best reviews, but I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Kung Fu Panda 4. I watched Kung Fu Panda 4. I think that's a... Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I've really watched. This and, and, you know, I'm watching tons of Love is Blind <laughs> right now with the wife. <laughs> that I'm, reunions I'm, tonight, man. I'm so excited. I'm, uh, watching the, <laughs> I'm watching The Bear on Hulu, and that's an incredible show. Such a good show. Dude. Oh, season oh. three is in June. I'm so excited. Hell yeah, dude. Like, give me some more Evan Moss Bach Rock. Like, that guy is so fucking talented. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Eh, pardon my French, but like he's so good. And like, once I figured out who he was and like, he's playing Ben Graham in the MCU, that cast is going to be just fine. They're, they're yeah. going to be just fine. Yeah. I'm so stoked for him to do uh, the MCU. I, mm-hmm. I think he'll be a great uh, Ben Graham for sure. Yes. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's go to our first topic. Thank you guys. Once again, everyone's in here. We're, we're chatting. I see people chatting in the in the chat to each other. I always love to see that. Daily Reacts Gaming, thank you for joining us. The View with Drew is in here. Uh, as always, guys, when it comes to guests, I'm not going to be able to get to every single comment and question like we try to do usually, but uh, we'll try to do our best. But with that, thank you guys for being here, and we are going to move on to topic number one. Oh, yeah. <sighs> All right, man. So this Sunday was of course the oscars uh this yes. was one of this was one of the most anticipated oscars i've actually think that people were looking forward to in a while because mm-hmm. we had great films last year even though with the delays and stuff that happened we the the nominees everyone that was voted or was being voted for uh felt totally earned totally deserved there was a lot of things that i was excited to see win and and, and the oscars in the past their shows haven't necessarily been the most exciting. I mean, I, I for one, can sometimes find the Oscars to be a drag to get through. I'll, I'll just be honest. Like, I'm not someone in the movie community who gets super amped about the Oscars. Also, I don't, I don't always see everything. Very rarely do I ever see everything that's nominated. And my whole thing is, if I haven't seen it, I can't have an opinion about it. So, right. for example, The Boy and the Heron, one animated I wanted Spider Verse to win. I haven't seen Boy in the Heron. I was though, so I I was floored. That was the biggest surprise yeah. of the night for me because I did see Boy in the Heron. I saw the English dubbed version with Robert Pattinson playing the weird creature, but that was I enjoyed it. I enjoyed how weird it all was. I thought it was a very endearing story, but Across the Spider Verse was clearly better than that movie. I think in every facet, but the Academy didn't see it that way, and that's okay. Movies are subjective, so yeah, I, I, absolutely. I've gotten, I've gotten past the point where I'm like done hounding the Academy and wasting my energy because at the end of the day, it is one board's opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, we can, everybody can have their own opinions. That's what's great about movies. Yeah. And the great thing about the Oscars this year is the show was actually pretty decent. I, yeah. actually, I actually found sitting down watching the Oscars. I mean, there was a couple things still that I was like, okay, not a fan, but overall great show and apparently Uh a lot of people thought that too because according to the hollywood reporter this was the most watched oscars in years here's what they had to say uh the 2024 oscars were the most watched in four years the jimmy kimmel hosted telecast on abc averaged 19.5 million viewers according to time zone adjusted uh fast national ratings from nielsen that's a 4% increase from a year ago. The 96 Academy Awards scored the biggest audience for any award show since 2020, 
When that year's Oscars held a month before the U.S. went into lockdown in the early days of COVID-19 pandemic, drew 23.6 million viewers. And that comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter. So we are getting to the point now where I have to take this off. There we go. We are (laughs) we we are getting to the point where the ratings almost match pre-pandemic numbers. And in four years, it's because the Oscars were in a slump. Like, let's just admit it. The Oscars were in a slump every time the Oscars ended for the last four years. All you heard was the least amount of viewers they've ever had. The least amount of viewers the Oscars ever had year after year. But Mm -hmm. they did something right this year, man. So I want to get into it. This isn't going to be like a full recap of the Oscars, but I want to talk about some of our favorite moments from the Oscars, man. What's something that happened during the Oscars? What's a moment someone won? What made you happy? How did you feel about the Oscars? Well, I I was very satisfied, Zach, with this year's Oscars. And I feel like a big reason for that ratings increase was actually because you had some nominees this year that felt like big deals. Because mm-hmm. you remember the Barbenheimer trend, that double yes. feature. People were going to the movie theaters in droves last summer to see both of those movies. That's right. That is a double feature that you just like. Y- I own both Blu-rays. Like, I can't do that. Like, I can't watch one of those movies without the other one now. Cause it's like, I can't help but think of like, you know, when I think of Oppenheimer, which was my favorite movie of last year, I can't help but think of Barbie. Cause it came out the same day, <laughs> you know? Um, That's very true. But I feel like some of my favorite moments from the show might surprise you. I really loved a lot of the speeches that we got this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the winners I felt like were well-deserved. Robert Downey Jr.'s win yeah, was incredible incredibly emotional speech love seeing him get up there and like give the presidential pose divine joy randolph no surprise that she won for the holdover so happy man i'm so happy yeah emma stone listen i i get why people are a little bit upset that it wasn't lily gladstone but the fact that emma stone has two oscars to her name and she's only in her 30s like yeah (laughs) there. That is impressive in and of itself. Killian Murphy might have been my favorite speech of the entire night because Mm -hmm. it felt like when he went up there, he took the time to greet every single presenter. And I saw someone on Twitter. They were like, look at how Killian Murphy takes time with all these legends. McConaughey, uh, Ben Kingsley. uh, I forget who else was up there. Brendan Fraser was certainly up there reading out the name. Yes, but Uh, um, Kiki Kwan. Passing yeah. the Oscar over. Yeah, Ki Huey Kwan uh gave RDJ the Oscar because I believe Ki Huey Kwan won. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, it's okay. It's okay. No, Brendan Fraser as the best actor winner last year got to give out this year, as it's per the Academy's tradition. But Killian Murphy is such a class act because he took the time with all these legends and he shook every one of their hands, and the crowd let him have it. <laughs> like yeah. this guy's ovation was staggering. And Christopher Nolan finally has an Oscar win to his name after yep. all this time. Another jump off the couch moment for me is when he Thank won. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God they picked the right one. But I mean, his speech I, was probably my favorite speech, like just really? like industry wise. Well, I, I also liked um, the screenwriter for American fiction. Oh, he was like, mm-hmm. like Hollywood, like give 20 million dollars to 10 movies instead of these 200 million like you can you can do more there's another christopher nolan there's another greta out there and i thought that was a really good speech but i really yeah. liked um what i liked about oh who are we talking about now i forget uh oh christopher nolan when we when you're mm-hmm. talking about christopher nolan i thought it was really almost like profound when he was like you know film is 100 years old think of where painting and this was at 100 years and think of where film can still go like i thought yeah. that was that was great i thought that was a great moment and now Christopher Nolan's next movie, whenever that is, when that trailer comes out, people are going to be watching it and waiting for that Academy Award winner Christopher Nolan title. Yeah, yep. um, there because everybody's going to know who he is now, and there's a chance that his next movie could even beat Oppenheimer's box office return. Yeah, just I mean, because of that's how. A feat. It, it is a feat. It is a feat. But, you know, Oppenheimer was just an incredible movie. That was my favorite movie of last year. So I'm glad that I got that pick right. <laughs> best picture, at least this time. Yeah, speaking of best picture, what the heck was Al Pacino doing, dude? I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I don't know. I was like, kind of let down. Like, the build up, usually, the best picture. They usually pick, like, a legendary name that's still right. around in Hollywood. Like, last year was Harrison Ford, who felt like a 
very fitting name to <laughs> give everything these, everywhere these all at once people. the Oscar. <laughs> yeah, no, Harrison Ford in his 80s. I think Al Pacino's in his 80s at this point. Yeah, might as well all just right. have Robert. Might as well just have Robert De Niro get up there and do it next year. I have <laughs> like, the envelope here. I'm gonna open it now. <laughs> this is best picture. <laughs> I'm seeing Oppenheimer. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Which is like. <laughs> So is, they won? Is are that you, what are you sure? Are you sure it was Pacino or was that Christopher Walken you were doing? <laughs> Dude, I can't do accents. I'm terrible at him. No, but, uh, so, no. so yeah. the winner, there you go. Best picture <laughs> nomination. The Oscar goes to Oh, I see Oppenheimer. <laughs> but here you go. Christopher Nolan, this item is non-returnable. You can't <laughs> you can't do it's it. In a glo- but... Golden Globe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, that, that's uh, that was really good. Um, no, but like yeah, exactly. that, 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 that build up to best picture is always so exciting, and I just felt like I, I, I did read that the producers told him not to, I guess, give the nominations time because they were doing best picture uh, film reels throughout the whole thing, but mm-hmm. I was disappointed by it for sure. Um, yeah. what do you think was the biggest surprise of the show? Well, what was probably, the most probably this? Win? probably uh probably this when this happened you know <laughs> uh you know i it, it's weird because it, i'm looking at a picture of a stage and a microphone <laughs> oh am i supposed am i supposed to be looking at a person dude everybody saw john cena that night <laughs> everybody no it was weird john. because like someone sent me a clip and jimmy kimmel was doing part of his monologue and it's, people started laughing uh you know and it's like the camera was pointing at a random part of the stage like somebody was there like i couldn't see anybody so (laughs) no honestly honestly though this was this was my favorite gag of the night i thought i first of all you can kind of see if you why brave enough to look at his (laughs) groin he is wearing something so it's not as bad as some people thought it was but um this was my i'll tell you why this was my favorite moment of the night i'll tell you why because it was, it was, it would immediately followed that terrible Chip and Dale's bit that Melissa McCarthy and Kate, uh, or was it Kate? No, yeah. it was Kate McKenna. It, Kate McKenna did the Jurassic Park. Who was it? It was, uh, who who was with was Melissa it? McCarthy? It was, uh, I don't. Oh, what's remember. Her, I can't remember who, what her name is. But I Octavia say... Spencer. It was spent uh, Octavia Spencer. Oh, Octavia Spencer. What? Yes. Melissa McCarthy, Octavia Spencer, they did this stupid, we're Chip and Dale. Oh, we're Chip and Dale's? No, we're Chip and Dale. And it went off for like two minutes. And I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Like, even, even Jimmy Kimmel's jokes, I didn't think were that great during the no. monologue, during everything. Oh, like, no. No. I, and yeah. that's a that's a, another off-topic question. But do you think like we're done with Jimmy Kimmel hosting the Oscars? Every time he hosts, something goes wrong with Best Picture. So... I think he might become a bad omen, a bad omen for the Oscars. I, I don't know, man. I was talking to my mom about this, actually, of all people. And I was like, do you think the Academy is just going to be sick of Jimmy Kimmel? And she's like, well, to tell you the truth, nobody in Hollywood wants to host the Oscars because yeah. of all the like, you know, of the huge spotlight that's going to be on them and all the pressure that's going to be on them. Jimmy Kimmel just isn't funny. And his like monologue, he made a joke about Emma Stone and you could actually see Emma Stone. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, like you could read her lips to her husband uh, who was sitting next to her. And she was like, what a prick, yeah. <laughs> what a prick, you know, like get him off. Of sit- Jimmy Kimmel is no Billy Crystal. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, so, that's very true. But yeah. here's what I'll say about Jimmy Kimmel. Like the Oscars is a thankless job. Like mm-hmm. it's you, you either get hated or you do a good job and no one cares kind of thing. But um, it it is it takes a lot to host the show and he does it. Yeah. And he does have confidence when he's up there. I'll give him that. So and, and I didn't think he was a t- like, I don't think he's terrible. I didn't think he like there was a couple things. There were a couple lines that had me la- the Madam Web shots. All of them got me laughing pretty good. They were they were good. all pretty good. Um, Madam Web deserves all the shots. Yeah, absolutely. And. I, I liked um well I, I didn't like the Robert Downey Jr. jokes very much. Um it just kind of felt poor taste and so nineties. Like seriously, dude, we're still joking about him and his drug addiction. Like on the night that he's nominated for like the biggest, most prestigious like, come on, dude. Don't do that. Like, yeah, one of them, best supporting actor. Yeah, that's certainly up there. Um, but anyways, going back to my original point, this moment for me is when the show came alive. 
<laughs> because I, I thought the banter between him and Jimmy was great. The buildup of referencing the streaker from like the 70s who ran across the stage and then ending it with John Cena out there with nothing but a card. Costumes are very important. <laughs> I was like, yeah. that was a really good setup. That was a really good build and that comp comedic ending like hit really, really hard for me. And that's Jimmy. You got to give props. That's Jimmy Kimmel as well. Jimmy Kimmel sets that up so he it's not that he wasn't entirely unfunny he had some good ideas and that was that was one of my favorites i thought yeah it was hilarious i mad props to cena for like you know leaning into the comedy because like i said this in one of my last reviews he's a funny guy he's proven so many times like in movies in the past like blockers peacemaker like you know that's not a movie but regardless like he's just goofy and he yep. can he is willing to do anything to get a laugh this to me felt like Hollywood was hazing John Cena. Like, you know, he, he went in there. Like, really? Yeah. No, like uh, <laughs> who else would go out there freaking naked on the Oscars? Dude, you know, I, I think he loved it. Look what he uh, no, does I'm, Peacemaker. He, he's hardly wearing clothes in Peacemaker. He I'm wants, sure he did. He wants I'm, the sure, world to see. I'm sure he did. He wanted to be accepted into like, you know, these like prestige to this prestigious room of actors, if you will. It's almost like. I never got into the Greek life in college. I never wanted to get into a fraternity or anything like that. This honestly felt like John Cena's initiation into the frat mm, house. Interesting. So, it, I don't know. I don't know. All like, right. I, I'll tell you straight up. I don't agree with you. I think uh, I fine. think he was totally game. I think it was all in fun. I think he probably had a ball. He probably even uh, in some ways suggested it. I don't know. I can't prove that, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if he was like, hey, Kimmel, just like let me out there. Like I do I I doubt he suggested it, but <laughs> I mean I mean the fact that nobody could see him, I mean he still has his dignity. So <laughs> anyways, exactly. moving on from John Cena. Um all of John Cena. You definitely saw John Cena. Um let's talk about probably one of the best Oscar performances ever. Definitely more than Knuff. Knuff was I'm just can live with uh, Ryan Gosling, the cast of Barbie and Slash. <laughs> this rule, dude, <laughs> this freaking ruled. I don't care what anybody says. Like, say what you want about the Academy not really recognizing Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie, because like, in all honesty, they should have been recognized. Margot Robbie should have been in that best actress category. Greta Gerwig should have been nominated for best director. Um but Ryan Gosling was recognized and I'm just Ken was also recognized for best original song, which yes, honestly was inevitable. Like you, sh you guys should have expected this ever since the movie came out. I'm, I'm glad that the Billie Eilish song won over this because that definitely related yeah. the message a lot more than this one. Her performance but fact, was really good too. She was oh, really yeah. good. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The <laughs> Ryan Gosling's performance though, we don't get a lot of movie stars like this. Like just the fact that he commands the room, no matter yes. what, no matter what kind of goofy situation he's put into the fact that he starts the song in the crowd, sitting behind a Margot Robbie. And she is just <laughs> bursting out into laughter. Like she can't help herself. And the fact that you have karaoke lyrics on the wall that Martin Scorsese, I guess was singing along to, yeah, uh, he he goes up to his female counterparts in the front row from Barbie. He goes up to his good friend Emma Stone and she sings a little bit. It was awesome. It was so awesome. Such a great moment. Loved it. But even even beyond that though, this was like this was the epitome of the movie year 2023. Like I'm just Ken kind of encapsulates just the excitement and uh the love and joy and almost like come togetherness that we had in the movies of 2023 so to see everyone yeah. like up on their feet as this was being performed um it was it was it was magical it was uh it was the magic of the movies that we used to talk about all this i don't even know if people talk about that as often anymore but when i was growing up the magic of the movies was was always talked about it and was so surreal was it. man it was surreal i wanted this to be one of the best oscar song performances ever and Lo and behold, lo and behold, that's exactly what we got. Yeah, I completely agree. So in the end, like super excited that uh, 
Devine Joy Randolph won for Best Supporting Actress. Love the holdovers. I was very happy to see that. Love that Robert Downey Jr. won. Love that Kelly Murphy won. I loved that Godzilla Minus One won for visual effects. Oh, I was, was so awesome. happy. And that I was, was awesome. so heartwarmed when those people went up with their Godzilla statues, just like this little team that could in visual with effects. Their hot toys. Yes. Like, oh, it was, it was so wholesome. Toys. I loved oh. it. It was so I it was so wholesome. I loved that moment so much. I thought it was great. There, there was just a lot of moments that made me reminded why I love the movies, why I love filmmaking. And too, it, it, it truly felt like a celebration of the art at the Oscars yeah. this year. And I thought they did a really good job. Now, I ha- I'm torn on how they did the actor and actresses uh, nominations. Hmm. Because in concept, I, re- I I liked the past winners coming out to give honor to the now nominated and then the physical passing of the torch from the previous Oscar winner to the new Oscar winner. In concept, I really liked that. But to me, having every single member talk about one of them it did cause a pacing issue for the show for me. I did think hmm. it made it just a little bit too long. And for someone like my mom, who's a way more casual, and this was another big thing with the Alpacino Best Picture, my mom liked seeing the clips, liked seeing the glimpses. Yeah. She, like, she's the casual audience who doesn't pay attention to all this. She doesn't know all these movies. She doesn't know 90% of these movies. And the Oscars is like her preview into what is she interested in based on those clip packages. And exactly. you can argue that when they came back from commercial, they, they did play some clips from some of the movies, not all of the movies. But I, I just feel like the clip packages does make the show go a little bit faster. And it does give the casual audience, like my mom, that glimpse into what movie they're nominated for and if she's interested in watching it or not. Yeah. But like, like at the same time, though, I did think that it was it was a pretty like beautiful thing to see the past winner give it to the new even if robert downey jr kind of pried it out of his hands um, he couldn't wait he couldn't <laughs> wait yeah i am inevitable <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's what he said to key week one but yeah poor, but poor uh, guy. What, what do you think of that man did you like that they presented that way no no i i mean i knew it was a tradition to have the like the previous year's winner go out there and present the award to the next one um it was interesting to see multiple former winners out there yeah. talking about these people. Like you have Jennifer Lawrence up there talking about, uh, I don't, I God, I don't even remember which nominee she had. I know Sally field had Emma stone though, um, which was interesting. Jennifer Lawrence, I feel like should have been the one to talk about Emma stone considering how close of friends they are in real life. But yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, it just felt to me like the nominees were being talked about like, by random like picks <laughs> you know like out of the out of the crop that they had yeah it just felt like okay what what's their connection to this person what's ben kingsley's connection to this person what's brendan fraser's connection to this person you know we did have a moment where justin hammer was talking to tony stark and blade was talking to bruce banner so that kind i geeked out at that moment that was kind of fun mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. i i love when emma stone won emma stone's speech was so heartwarming too and yeah like, her tribute to her three-year-old daughter. And I had no idea that Emma Stone was actually a mom. Like, I didn't it either. Doesn't, no idea. It doesn't surprise me, but <laughs> Emma Stone saying that her little daughter turned her life technicolor was such a beautiful, poignant line. Um, it might resonate more with me once I become a parent, but like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, that moved me. That certainly moves me. I loved Mark Ruffalo's reaction to Emma Stone's win too. He was so happy. But Yeah. That was um, one thing I loved too was seeing like, People who are clearly f- legit friends in the business, like that's one of the that's one of the fun of the Oscars every year is seeing them like interact and and get because like uh, was it Killian? Yeah, it was Killian Murphy when he gave that big hug to like Emily Blunt and John Krasinski was kind of like, okay, that's my wife, a little bit too long, buddy, but <laughs> but it was just like it's just well, those wholesome, beautiful moments, you know. I mean, it's it's Emily Blunt after all, so <laughs> can't 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 say I blame him. Uh, <laughs> No, with, anyway. but you know, with that said, uh, yeah, they did a good job with it. I'll be honest; this was one of my, one of my favorite Oscars to watch. Good in ceremony. Our recent years, 
good yeah. ceremony. I think it's the best it's been since I started YouTube, at least. Um, yeah, I agree with that for sure. Yeah, can't tell you how many times I've watched that I'm Just Ken performance. It was so <laughs> awesome. It's so good. <laughs> anyway, guys, what did you guys think of the Oscars this year? Are you guys usually fans of the Oscars, or did this year surprise you a little bit more than usual like it did for me? Comment down below. Let us know, guys. We'd love to hear all your thoughts and opinions. And before we take our intermission to get back into the comments and questions, we're going to move on and do one more topic. And this topic is going to be this. All right, man. You ready for some controversy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for some. Let's open up this can of worms. <laughs> All right, guys. Scream 7. This has been quite the discussion. Uh, first Get of the all. shovel. <laughs> Scream 6, you know, came out pretty beloved. People were. People pretty much like uh, Scream 6, I would say, especially Scream fans. The majority of them really like Scream 6. And I feel like Scream 6 fans are really starting to accept Jenna Ortega. And uh, forgive me if I get her name wrong. Uh, Melissa Barrero. Barrera? Yeah. Yeah. Barrera. Yeah. yeah you got yeah, it. Melissa Barrera. They were, they were accepting them as the new faces, as our characters going forward in Scream. They didn't even have Sydney in Scream 6. And fans nope. seem totally okay with that. Mm hmm. Then, you know, Melissa uh, Barrera, you know, spoke politically about what she believes in, which I commend her, great, like, totally fine. The studio, though, decided they no, they no longer want to be associated with her based on that, which, as much as we hate to say it, the studio did have the right to do. I don't necessarily agree with it. I don't like it. But they had the right to do it. They they removed her from the picture shortly after that. Jenna Ortega said scheduling conflicts made her leave. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. But basically, fans were almost calling for the death of the Scream franchise with these removals. They did not want Scream 7 to happen. And I said on the show, when it happened, Scream 7 is going to happen, guys. Scream 7 is going to happen. They are not going to cancel or can Scream 7 because the main star of Scream is still there, and that's Ghostface. And ultimately, there's also Nev Campbell. And Nev Campbell didn't come back because of you know contract <clears throat> issues and, and, and money. But that can always be fixed, especially when you're a studio and you're desperate. And it looks like the studio is desperate because Nev Campbell, guys, she's coming back. She yeah. is officially signed on. Here's what Deadline had to say about this. Um, Nev Campbell said on Tuesday that she will return as Sydney Prescott for the next film in the Scream franchise. In an Instagram post today, Campbell said that she uh, is it was asked to come back and is happy to return to the pick, which for now is only known as the untitled Scream 7 and will be directed by the original Scream writer Kevin Williamson from a script penned by Guy Busick. And then uh, Nev Campbell wrote this on Instagram. It's always been such a blast and an honor to get to play Sydney in the screen movies, Campbell wrote today. My appreciation for these films and for what they have meant to me has never waned. I'm very happy and proud to say that I've been asked in the most positive, respectful way to bring Sydney back to the screen, and I couldn't be more thrilled. All right, guys, that comes to us from Deadline once again. And man, I'm just going to throw it to you because I've kind of talked about this. I've talked about this uh, before, and, and people know my thoughts on this. I think Scream is going to be fine, going to be healthy. I don't think the firing of Melissa Barrera and the uh, exit of Jenna Ortega is going to necessarily ruin the franchise. I don't think it's going to bring the box office down that much. I understand there was boycotts, but it's on Twitter. So what does that really mean? I want to ask you, though, man, uh, were you one who weren't, you didn't want to see Scream 7 after all that went down? Were you open to it? And now how do you feel knowing that Nev Campbell, our original Scream Queen for Scream, is coming back? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so here's the thing, guys. And this is a very, like, this is a very tiered question, Zach. There's a lot of feelings that can be circulated Absolutely. out of this whole entire situation. First of all, everybody has the right to freedom of speech uh, in the United States, especially. Uh yeah, Melissa Barrera had the right to, you know, say what was on her mind. Yep. If the studio didn't agree with her. Uh, the studio doesn't agree with her. Um, and the fact that, you know, she was <laughs> she was canned just for something that is completely unrelated to the making of a movie. I mean, I don't know the full extent of everything that Melissa Barrera has said on her social media. Like, I don't necessarily keep up with that. 
I try to steer away from like political talk because it's just, yeah. When you open up that whole big, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a gigantic mess. It's an absolutely yeah. gigantic mess. And especially since we're in a leap year, we're going to elect a president in uh, November. Like it's not, not a fun time, but I mean, with that said, Melissa Barrera was on a huge role through both screen movies. And it almost felt like her momentum was completely derailed by the firing. Uh, Jenna Ortega, her saying that she had scheduling conflicts. You know what? I believe her. I believe her because Wednesday is a huge hit on Netflix. They're going to put out so many more episodes. Like, I, I don't know if season two is in the works. I don't know when that's coming out, but she is a huge star. So I'm yep. sure her plate is completely filled. She, I mean, it's tough, man, because like, could she say that, oh, Melissa Barrera's firing had a factor in me not coming back? She could say that, but that would also mean that she would be kind of difficult to work with for a lot of people. So it's, it's tough. It's, it's a really tough situation. As far as Neve Campbell coming back, I honestly felt like her arc was completed in Scream 5. So mm. her coming back is kind of like, okay, you know, like, let let's see let's see how they do let's see what they do with her um and i love that kevin williamson is coming to coming into direct i love him as a writer i've said this many times on my channel i love and adore what kevin williamson does with these movies as a writer i don't know how much of a proven commodity he is as a director though did he direct scream six i don't remember no i don't think he did he didn't okay so i mean it's a whole new ball game whole new ball game whether or not they bring in like other old characters from the past screen movies maybe to be ghost faces of neve campbell's past I, they could do a lot of things with scream seven but i mean i'm gonna see it because at the end of the day i do do this youtube thing and i watch yeah. any movie that i can and i feel like every movie deserves a chance i love the scream movies um i'm not gonna be overly eager to see it but <laughs> like I said, every movie that comes out at least deserves a chance. If yeah. you don't like it, you don't like it after watching it. You know, that's totally yeah. fine. And here's the thing, too. I mean, like I like I said, I do think this is a desperate move. I do. I think um, it goes against the original plans for Scream 7. Absolutely. Um, so is it going to turn out well? We'll have to wait and see. It may turn out to be crap they may try to uh pull us in with the nostalgia a little too much but yeah. what i will what i will say is melissa barrera and jenna ortega maybe more so jenna ortega than melissa barrera but they were they were not the things pulling people into the scream franchise no. it was ghostface it was and as, as long as you've got ghostface they're gonna keep making these movies they're going to pump them out until they stop making. I mean, they make these things for like 20, 30 million dollars. And then they make like 100. And, I think the last one made 160 million worldwide in the box. Super office. profitable, man. Like yep. these uh, these scary movie franchises, Halloween, that original Halloween is probably one of the most profitable movies of all time. So the screen movies are very much the same. Yep. Um, and you're absolutely right. As long as they have somebody that is physically foreboding to perform stunts as Ghostface and just be under a mask the whole time, then they're going to keep making them. You know, yeah. as long as Neve Campbell is still down, they're going to keep making them. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yep. But That's bottom line is Scream 7, not canceled. Moving forward, they got Sydney back. Are you guys excited? What do you guys think of this news? Comment down below. Let us know all your thoughts and opinions. Are you still going to boycott the movie? Were you going to boycott it in in the first place let us know we'd love to hear all your thoughts and opinions all right guys with that down and out of the way let's get back and take some comments and questions because you guys have just been absolutely annihilating this chat uh like i said guys appreciate all it. of you being here like it's insane um I, we can't get to everybody uh but we'll we're gonna try our best <laughs> we're gonna try our best frankie beastmakers in here what's going on man Envire earth 2 what's going on man says he's 26 as well um we got old maddie in here what's going on dude thanks for joining us um uh let's see here Envir Earth 2 says if spider-man was in venom 3 it would have been great it could have been called venom versus spider-man i mean it would have been great if they had a good story it still doesn't mean that it, it, it is going to be great <laughs> i mean just because you throw spider-man in there with especially if it's still with the tone of the venom films i think it would have just been a mess either way it could have been good 
but they didn't end up doing that. So, nope. Nope. And honestly, keep Andrew Garfield out of those movies. My goodness. Please. I would, <laughs> I would rather see an amazing Spider Man 3 over him appearing in a Venom movie. Like, yeah. Please. Uh, Cosmic Broadcast, a beloved channel member. What's going on, Jonah? Thanks for joining us, man. <laughs> I propose a title Venom 4. Venom still no Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> yep perfect perfect that speaks yep. volumes <laughs> that that's it that's it sony would never call it that but that's that that's what i'm that's what i'm gonna call it <laughs> uh enviro 2 says i watched american cycle last night it was a crazy movie what's your opinion of this movie i'm also thinking of watching taxi driver and james bond franchise oh. i mean the james bond franchise is quite a ride so get ready taxi driver is amazing I'm not a fan of American Psycho very much, which I know what? is like, I know, I know it's a very unpopular thing to say, oh, but I'm not. Oh my god. I, I'm not a fan of it very much. Where do I where do I even begin with American Psycho, man? Uh, I get it. It's not everybody's acquired taste. Um I just find it freaking hilarious. And I still think to this day that came out in the year 2000. That is still one of Christian Bale's career defining performances. That was before he even became Batman. That was before he even did all this crazy stuff with uh, David O. Russell and like transforming mm -hmm. his body. Like it's, it is a, like just immaculate razor sharp dialogue that shouldn't be funny, but it is. And you can't help but feel uncomfortable when you laugh at it. And I yeah. feel like that's, what's so interesting about American, uh, American psycho, excuse me. But I mean, um, Christian Bale is great. Like I absolutely can't deny that he's really good in the movie. I just don't enjoy watching it. You have That's Willem Dafoe in there. Willem Dafoe plays the detective. Like what could mm -hmm. go wrong? You know, <laughs> you know uh, what? I just didn't like it. <laughs> maybe, That's maybe fine. I gotta go back to it. Cause I watched it. I did watch it when I was like 15, 16 years old. So that's a, oh my gosh, it's almost a decade ago uh, <laughs> that I watched it. So maybe maybe I have different uh, opinions and different feelings towards it now. But yeah, we'll see. Give it another shot. Uh, Dakota Bay Movie says on John Campia's show, which I I love. If you guys couldn't tell, this show is very inspired by the John Campia show. Um, he talked about how he thinks that streaming services prices will go up by adding subscription fees, credits, and premium. Thoughts on this? If streaming did add these, um, streaming is always gonna go up <laughs> it's, it's, that's it's that's just the nature of the beast like the more years yep. we're alive the longer prices are going to keep going up like what's the when's the last time you went to a movie theater and a popcorn was five dollars you know like, yeah <laughs> popcorn nowadays is like i don't know you get nine dollars in a large popcorn like it's yeah it price is just going to keep going up sooner or later a large popcorn will be ten dollars that is ridiculous but that is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Like I'm, I, I'm not an expert. So do not take this for my word. This is just how I think the streaming business kind of is right. Mm -hmm. Either the prices are going to keep going up and we're going to be rewarded or the prices are going to go, I don't know, down or stay the same, but the streaming services are going to get lame because here's the thing is with streaming services, their whole thing is they need subscriptions to make money. And if, if they're yeah. not going to get the subscribers, then they need to do some kind of ad thing, right? But you look at these streaming services, look at what we're getting right now, right? We're getting Marvel high quality, well, some might argue that, but high quality Marvel shows, high quality Star Wars shows on production-wise, let's say production-wise, on mm -hmm. Disney+, Plus, right? Like th they're pumping $200 million into these yeah. shows, right? Mm-hmm. Where's the money coming back for that? The the money coming back for that is subscribers. Until uh, unless they get subscribers to pay for these insanely budgeted projects, they're losing money on those projects. It's no different than making a two hundred million dollar movie, pumping the money into that, and then putting it out for free. That's essentially mm -hmm. what they're doing on streaming services. But they're relying on subscribers to subscribe and watch it. And with pirating and all that stuff, subscriber count is going to hit a wall. Just, yeah. just with inflation, just with everything, people are going to go to pirate and people are going to. That's why a lot of these streaming services have cracked down on password sharing is because they're losing money and they need to stop losing money that way. So unless they keep getting subscribers where they can just not even justify, but at least make these high budgeted projects and still have money coming in for them. Once that stops, they either have to 
cut back on these budgets, they either have to stop making these so that their subscriber count can actually pay for their business. Because right now Mm -hmm. with streaming services, with what they're trying to put out to get people to subscribe is losing them money. Like I think Netflix is the only streaming services service that is actually profitable and it took them like a decade to get there disney plus is losing money hbo max is losing every other streaming service right now is losing money not making money but they're putting so much money into their projects that they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot so unless they stop with that i really don't see how they won't stop increasing their prices because as they keep losing money they gotta raise the prices to make up for the money they lost that's yeah that's, that's how i view it I don't, I don't know how actually the analytics and all the data and stuff that go into it, but that, that would be my thoughts and opinions on it. So yeah, I think it's going to be inevitable that we're, I mean, we're already getting like ad fee or ad uh, tiers that we can join and they're even doing like, Hey, the thing you're paying for right now, now that's an ad tier, pay more to get rid of the ads. <laughs> and <laughs> that's not going to stop. Yeah, no. And I think that's also like, part of the whole crux of what the American fiction uh, writing team was talking about in their Oscar Mm -hmm. speech. Like you don't need to be throwing like infinite amounts of money into your projects in order to make a movie look like it's profitable. Like if you throw a lot of money in a movie, of course it's profitable, you know, like (laughs) you're throwing $200 million at it. Look what Netflix throws out there. Like how, how much was space man? That looked like a pretty expensive. Movie. What's the budget for Spaceman? And they 40, I'm gonna look this up real quick. It's it's forty million dollars to make that movie, right? What? Yeah, that's what I'm getting right here. The budget, budget for Spaceman was forty million dollars. They put that on Netflix. There's no opening is- box office. No one's paying to go see the movie. They're just if they have Netflix, they have the movie. That's insane. I mean, as a viewer, that's awesome. <laughs> what is ridiculous like, this is what that is <laughs> yeah business 40 million dollars to make that movie that's just one movie like damsel damsel is another one where it's like that had to have cost i don't know i'm gonna guess 15 20 million <sighs> okay i hope that this is wrong damsel damsel looks like it's more expensive than spaceman i'm hoping this is wrong oh <laughs> uh, what's the number Hit me. According to Forbes, it was two hundred and seventy-four million. What? That can't be. No. Right. That can't be right. That can't <sighs> be right. This. I think this is misinformation. Honestly, I don't. I'm. I'm. One sec. Box office mo- mojo. I gotta go to the box Jesus office. Jesus. Sorry. Christ. I know this is probably not the best time, but now I've got to know what box office mojo says about that. God. Oh, okay. This is a, this is a this is a different movie. This is a different damsel. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's still. good to know. That's really good to know. Okay. It was not that much. Let's see if Jesus. I can find the Netflix one. I can't find the Netflix one at the uh, moment. I don't have any okay. information on that. But anyway, Space Man, forty million, and that's just one. And they make Netflix new. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. So. Holy smokes, dude. Yeah. Streaming's gonna hit a wall. It's not gonna be too long from now. Is <laughs> basically mm-hmm. the bottom line to that. Um, let's see. Nathan's random movie says uh, the biggest disappointment for the Oscars for me that would be Spider Verse not winning animated feature. Yep, I think I think best P- picture announcement was very disappointing, and that was pretty disappointed. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Toxic Gamer saying, "I remember when I popped into your live stream a while back and was shocked that you and Guller knew each other." <laughs> Uh, yeah it's been some years now yeah yeah three years three years he said it's uh nuts. here got red comics what's going on man hope you're doing well it says hey zach i'm i'm glad i can finally catch a full stream again yeah man i'm glad to have you here man uh he is at film school down in australia right now he's he's going for it he's oh the dream. No shit. there you um, go there you go. Let's see here. What else we got? Go make uh, it happen, brother. Envire Earth 2 says so hyped for Jim Carrey returning for retire from retirement for Sonic 3. He's also very wise and spiritual. You guys should watch his spiritual videos. Uh, what do you think of Jim Carrey returning for Sonic 3, man? I love it. I love yeah. it. I mean, <laughs> Sonic 2 would have been a good send-off. 
Um, him coming out of retirement for some, I don't know what it is about these kids movies, bringing people out of retirement, Brian Cranston and Dustin Hoffman, both coming out of retirement for Kung Fu Panda four. Like, I don't know what it is about those kids movies, man, but they pull those guys out of the woodwork. I cannot rem I do not remember the last time I saw Dustin Hoffman in a new movie since Kung Fu Panda three. Like, I don't think he did anything else since then. To be That's fair, he could not record all the dialogue in his robe from home. So, <laughs> so yeah, and, and he no, gets a hefty paycheck from it too. So, absolutely, I'm sure that has yeah. something to do with it. So I'm sure but he Jim must Carrey, have loved having that. I, I think yeah. Jim Carrey must just love playing this character. I don't know why else he would need to come back. It kind of felt like he was pretty definitive with being done by the end of the second one, and now he's coming back. So he's not. He's not. Give me more uh, Jim Carrey comedy. Yes. <laughs> more Jim Carrey, the better. Uh, Enviro2 mm -hmm. says, what's your favorite James Bond movie, and who would you cast as the new Bond? I'll let you go first, man. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, My favorite Bond movie is definitely Casino Royale. As far as who I would cast as the new Bond, I know they were saying for a long time that they wanted to cast a person of color in that role. Um. I don't know. I, I honestly, I couldn't give you a name. Like maybe off the top of my head, I know he's not a person of color, but I always thought that Henry Cavill would be a perfect James Bond. But mm. well, it's, it's still, we haven't had a new James Bond movie announced since No Time to Die came out. We haven't heard a lick of 007 since then. Um, I feel like once we start to hear rumblings, we can start having like more, formidable like options out there for who can yeah. take those shoes but it's like just off the top of my head I, I always thought henry cavill would be a phenomenal bond it's a good one yeah um my favorite bond movie definitely like the daniel craig ones are the are the more modern day action film ones like uh skyfall was really good i really like that one casino royale of course was great um i like license to kill Really? Which I, which, yeah, I know that's an odd one. I know that's kind of like like a weird one to pull out. Um, that's I an really like that selection. One. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> darker. It was a little. You know what I think it was? Was it was? I watched the James Bond movies like one after the other, and when you do that, mm -hmm. they're kind of repetitive. They have a very familiar yeah. formula to each of them. Whereas I felt like that's License to true. Kill was the first time where they broke that formula completely and yeah i don't know I, I liked that one a lot when i watched it i also really like goldfinger i think it's kind of goofy and hilarious but also really fun oh yeah oh yeah uh i love uh golden eye also that's my favorite one that brosnan yeah. did um skyfall obviously that's a great one I would put No Time to Die in that same tier as Skyfall and as uh, Casino Royale. I don't think it's better than Casino Royale, but I think yeah. it deserves to be in that same conversation. I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, it yeah. was definitely better than Quantum of Solace. <laughs> it was definitely better yeah. than that one, I think. I I might even say I liked No Time to Die more than Spectre. Like, I don't know what it was about Spectre, but oh, I think yeah. the I enjoyed Spectre. I really enjoyed Spectre. I love Christoph Waltz as the villain. Uh, I just felt like related to No Time to Die, I much prefer uh, No Time to Die's pacing. Mm. Very true. Yeah. yeah Spectre uh, fans was of something. Very got, much uh, a slow burn. Oh, yeah. Very much a slow burn. Uh, fans of something's anyway. What's going on, Eddie and or Haley? Uh, he says, hey, Zach, my favorite part of the Oscars was Arnold and Danny ganging up on Michael. Too fun. That w Oh, I don't. I can't believe I forgot about that. That was a great moment. Hell yes. Because I thought they were going to come out and Arnold, talk about twins. Arnold. <laughs> I thought they were going to talk about twins. And I loved oh, that they God. spun him. We're like, we were both in Batman. And that's oh, it was great. That was great. Uh, Michael one one five nine one is in here. What's going on, dude? Says, what were you guys' thoughts on Oppenheimer winning Best Picture? Take out the papers and the trash. Oh yeah, it was great. It was great. Very happy. Couldn't couldn't uh, loved it. Loved it. I didn't, well deserved. Yeah, that was, I didn't. I didn't see everything that won mm -hmm. best or was nominated for Me Best too. Picture. But I saw that one, so I know I liked it, and I'm happy that it won. 
Um, let's see. Fans of something says that they oh, love yeah. him. All he's raw and doesn't give a crap. Uh, most don't like him because of that personality, but for me, it works. Yeah, I, I'm a fan of Kimmel. I I do like um, I do like his show. Like I'll watch his his uh, late night show every now and again when he has a guest on that I'm yeah. interested in. He is definitely one of the late night talk show hosts of all time. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's one of. <laughs> Very, very true. Uh, Jay yeah. Pilon, what's going on, Jay? Thanks for joining yeah, us. He, he is one people. of them. He's one of them. Uh, Envira 2, how long is Will Smith banned from the... <laughs> 10 years. Banned for 10 years. Yeah, good. So that must mean Bad Boys for... Uh, Bad Boys Ride or Die is not going to be nominated for Best Picture. Also, this just so. like... This put a scene in my head. So thanks for that, Envir Earth 2. <laughs> Imagine oh, if no. Will Smith slapped oh, no. naked John Cena. <laughs> oh, no. That, that's, no. A, that's a scene. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Will, thankfully, Will Smith would probably miss because he wouldn't be able to see John Cena anyway. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> I love how run into the ground those jokes are, but yet you still, <laughs> you roll with them. Well, I mean, you can't see him, so I just got to make sure that people know that they cannot see John Cena. Um, do you have truth. Toxic Gamer is wondering, what do you guys think is a few Oscar wins from the past or the present that you didn't agree with at all? Do you have any that jump out to you? Movies that mm. didn't deserve to win or actors or whatever who didn't deserve to win? Let's see. Um, few Oscar wins from the past that didn't deserve to win. Um, oh, good lord. Um, I mean, if we want to get really technical about it, like I understand that Spotlight was a super important movie, but I wouldn't have had that win over The Revenant. Like, The Revenant was so awesome. Uh, I don't know. Spotlight was definitely it was I understand why one best picture uh, Moonlight winning best picture over La La Land definitely bothered me. Uh, I was going to I was going to pick that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Just because of how incredible La La Land was. Uh, I'm trying to think of more. Did Justin Hurwitz win last year for Babylon for best score? Oh, I can't remember. I thought yeah. best score went to All Quiet on the Western Front. But I don't know. Oh, yeah, I no, think it, it did. Yeah, Babylon. Like, if Babylon didn't win, that should have won. Uh, God, I can't think of anything. I yeah, I that's mean, hard because can... you watch it once and it's hard to remember it all. But I do remember, um, because I and I haven't seen Moonlight, so just keep that in mind. Um, so I don't have anything to base that off of. But when they announced that La La Land won, I liked La La Land a lot, so I was excited. And then when they said, wait, it was red wrong, Moonlight, you guys won, I was very disappointed. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Yeah. It was hilarious. But I was disappointed that they actually didn't win because I wanted that's to why they, That's why they don't bring Warren Beatty in to read the envelope. <laughs> Guy almost Never like bring in all over. old actors to read the envelope because they don't know what. God. Uh, uh. The Hope Authority Alliance with Two Perspective. What's going on, guys? Says, uh, have you guys been watching more TV shows or movies this year so far? Mm, Good question. More movies. I, I, I've seen more movies. I've seen... Yeah, I haven't seen very many TV shows this year. I watched Ted the series all the way through. I mm. think that's it. I started Avatar The Last Airbender, fell off of it. Um, not that it was that bad or anything, just didn't really stick with it. Um, and yeah, and then I've watched Love is Blind. <laughs> Those are my TV shows for this year. So there you I've go. seen, I think, 11 movies at this point so far this year. Damn. Uh, how many movies have I seen this year? Probably, probably more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably more. <laughs> Um, let me look. Ricky Stanicki. Uh, I'll let you get to the next comment while I count. But one, two, sure. three. Uh, Nathan's Red Movies is asking, "What is a movie that you watched but will never watch again in your life?" Uh, Drive Away Dolls. That movie sucked. 
That's a recent one. I was very mm-hmm. disappointed that my theater didn't take it. And then I got the reviews and I was like, eh, you know what? Maybe it's for the best that my theater didn't take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so what's a movie that I've watched that I'll never watch? Ag- I mean, Sinister is one that. I- oh, Hereditary. Hereditary. Oh. I, I probably won't ever watch that again. That f- f- that was freaky. I watched was- uh, tw- 20 new movies this year so far. 20 nice dude i'm up i'm up to I'm up to 20 yeah uh, it's uh tomorrow well with damsel that'll make 21 and then love lies bleeding i'm gonna watch that tomorrow that'll make 22 22 nice. oh shit nice. oh shit 22 <laughs> that's uh that's wild we're only in march <laughs> that's, i'm sorry that's crazy. i'm sorry i try to watch no that's impressive too. <laughs> that's impressive uh talks game with 51 says i'm gonna head out now great stream as always well thank you so much for joining us man the show was made better because you were part of it i appreciate you and have a good night yeah uh firestorm says just finished watching the fountain after over a decade since i've last seen it i know it's insane i really love aaron F- or oh, i can never say that guy's name can you say that name let me see uh aaron Frosty? darren aronofsky yeah Yes, mm-hmm. there you go. I can never say that guy's name. Thank you for joining us, Firestorm. It's great to see you in here. I've yeah. never seen that movie. I've never seen it. Have you seen The Fountain? No, no. Yeah. Uh, I've seen plenty of Aronofsky movies in the past, and I'm assuming just based off his uh, track record, The Fountain is very strange. Yep. Well, uh, thanks for putting that on our radar, man. We'll have to check that out. Uh, let's see. Enviro 2 says, did you hear about the Spider-Man 4 controversy? Uh, the fights between Sony and Feige. What's the worst case scenario that Spider-Man returns to the Sony-verse? The argument is about Toby and Andrew in 4. Have you heard about this? This rumor that's going around? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sony wants Garfield and Toby in there and Feige is just wanting Holland in there. Uh, With a possible like Kingpin as the villain, street level Spider-Man on its own. Uh, street level Spider-Man would be really fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe including Daredevil in there after his show uh, gets up and running again. But it's it's still a ways away. We still haven't gotten a formal announcement from them. So yeah. I can't really have a formal opinion on whether or not, you know, Spider-Man 4 is going to be street level or whether or not it's going to be another multiversal adventure. But Which one would you want? That's a good question. Um I'll tell you this. I trust Feige more than I trust the Sony executives. So I would rather have the street level at this point. I yeah. wouldn't bring back uh, Garfield or Maguire until the next Avengers movies, believe it or not. 100% agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page. I think Sony even wanting to bring Maguire and Andrew, if this this is rumor, no one's confirmed this, right? So it's, it's, it's rumor. But if this is true, Sony wanting to bring them back for the fourth Spider-Man movie is missing the point of what made No Way Home special. Yes. It was it was an event. It was such a huge celebration moment of Spider-Man on the big screen. And it felt like it was done with care and purpose and love. Yeah, money, of course, was on their minds as well. But you didn't feel that when you watched it in the movies. Correct. This feels like money. This feels like... No Way Home almost made a billion or almost made two billion dollars. Let's do it again. Let's bring them back. Like what? What's the story for bringing them back? There was there was Doctor Strange and Peter. That was your in to bring them back. Now no one knows who Spider Man is. Not even Doctor Strange. And mm-hmm. why? Why would they come? Like why would you bring them back? I just don't think they have a story reason, and that's yeah. what would worry me. And this is one of the things with Feige and Sony being partners is the fact that they have control over spider-man ultimately but feige is so meticulous or at least he used to be i'm sure he still is but with the universe he's so meticulous with the universe and where they're going that the fact that sony's over here and could be like button heads and messing with his plans Mm -hmm. i i don't like that (laughs) as a fan i just want kevin feige's vision to be his vision and to follow through um yeah i yeah. i hope not say say what you want about the mcu and how it's the cool thing to hate now but um i think i again i trust feige and i trust his instincts and i trust where uh his storytelling is going i trust where his production is going 
Yeah, I, I agree. And I want to see what he does <laughs> more than I want to see what Sony does. And worst case scenario is that Spider-Man goes back to the Sony verse. That would be worst case scenario for sure. Uh, Red Comics is saying, if you'd like to know, I'm living in New York Film Academy. That's right. I got it confused. He used to live in Australia. He <laughs> He's not anymore. Ah. Uh, I love learning by doing it from people who work in the industry. It's cool to meet people who work on movies and have met famous people. Yeah, I realized my blunder when I said it, but we were in the middle of a topic. So I was just like, ah, I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to let it go. But yes, I am mm-hmm. being called out here. I see for people uh, <laughs> that yes, I I messed up on where he lives. Sorry about that, man. I, I apologize. Uh, Michael good. Entities, what's going on, man? Beloved channel member. The fact that Zach Efron wasn't even nominated is honestly criminal. Thank you. Thank you. The Iron Claw was not recognized one time by the Academy, and they should be ashamed of themselves uh, because that was an incredible film. Should have been nominated for Best Picture. Should have been nominated. Uh, should have nominated Zach Efron. Should have nominated Holt McCallany for Best Supporting Actor. Mm-hmm. You, they they screwed up. They screwed up big time. But so who would you replace Efron with? Uh so let's see. You had Jeffrey Wright. You had yep. Killian. Obviously, you had Paul Giamatti. You had God. Now I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Uh. <laughs> That's the one I guess you'd replace him with. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I can think of Coleman Domingo, and I don't I don't think his performance in Rustin was like it was good, but it wasn't better than Zach Efron. I would have mm, put okay. Zach Efron in place instead of Coleman Domingo. Uh God, who is this is this is bothering me so much because I <laughs> I know, I know this. Like <laughs> I know this. I did a live stream about it. Like, frick, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. It's Giamatti, Killian, Wright, Coleman. Who was the fifth one? Who was the if fifth anyone one? Said it, anyone said it yet? Anyone says it yet? Uh oh my god. <laughs> this is this is killing me here. Uh I don't think anyone said it yet. Nope. Yeah. By the way, uh we got a super chat in here from Red Comics to correct correct me. That he's still in Australia, and I got it right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, what the heck, man? Well, thank you so much for sending that in, dude. Thank you so much for the super chat, and I appreciate that. And now I feel kind of foolish that I thought you were in New York, but I said it right the first time. <laughs> so, but thank you, man. That was very nice of you to Bradley correct Cooper. On that level. Bradley Cooper. Oh my God, how could I forget? Oh yeah, yeah, Bradley you know, Cooper. for for Maestro. Um, honestly, you can take your pick, like either Coleman Domingo or Bradley Cooper can get out of that category and put Zac Efron in there. Like, all right. As long as you can pick someone that you can remove and replace them with, then okay. It's fair to call it a snub. Yeah. I just, I'm one of those people, like I kind of said, like, if I haven't seen, I don't have an opinion. So I can't really say it was a snub because I didn't see half of those performers work. So. I don't know who I would have taken out because I don't know. Like, I can't say because I can't have an opinion on it. But uh, yeah. I find a lot of people are like that, too. But they're just like, no, nah, just take him out. Did you see his work? No. <laughs> OK, <laughs> then how can you how can you justify just, it? <laughs> you just want Zac Efron for the sake of Zac Efron. They're, they're, they're just fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> um, Firestorm, by the way, is helping us out. Damsel was a 70 million dollar movie. Holy crap, dude. That's <laughs> Still a lot more than I thought it would be. That is ridiculous. For a Netflix movie, oh man, that CGI better be freaking incredible if it's seventy million dollars. It's okay. Like, well <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, it's it's okay. It's not bad. Uh 3D movie cinema. What's going on, Jake? Thanks for joining us tonight, man. Hey uh Zach, hope you're doing well. Life is good and all. Uh I can't wait to see the trailer for the crow tomorrow. I hope it's good, but not holding out much hope. Also, nice to meet oh, you. Others that yeah, yeah. Go go uh subscribe to him, man. Check him out. Yeah, on the road to two thousand. On the road yeah. to two thousand. Tell your friends. Let's do it. Um, the crow. I guess it's getting a trailer tomorrow. Are you excited? No. No. All right, there you go. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm indifferent towards them remaking the crow. Like the first one was so good. Why do you need to remake it? Like I guess a celebrated turning 30 years old. Yeah, come on. Come yeah. on. Come up with something better. 
Um, Invite Earth Two is saying, Zach, how long did it take you to watch all the Bond movies? I, I'm I'm going to ask you the same question. But for me, I was single and fresh out of high school, so it took me a week and a half. I think. Uh, let me just say that it took me way too long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bought the 24 movie at the time box set. And I was watching. Oh yeah, like yeah, it was like the like the black and gold box set, like for the fiftieth anniversary. Uh, not the big one. The uh, the I don't. I I I can see it. It's like this, and it's white, and it's got oh. all the bonds in front. Yeah, it's just oh, the yeah, the box, the rectangle box or whatever. But um, yeah, no. Um, I was single, living at home, fresh out of high school. I was watching two a night after work. And then I was watching them like all day long during. The- so you know what? It might have been like just a little over a week. It might not even been a week and a half. But I cranked. Yeah. Like they they all mostly merge together in my memory because I just mm. watched one after the other after the other. That like, I can't really like just like Moonraker. I I know when I watched Moonraker. <laughs> like uh-huh. I, but especially like uh, um, uh, like uh. What what some of the uh what was one that you said Golden Eye? Yeah, Golden yeah. Eye. And he um, did Tomorrow Never Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, yes. uh Die Another Day is another yes. one. Yeah, those ones couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell them apart. They're all just yeah. one movie in my mind. I honestly don't remember. Doctor No? You got Goldfinger? You Goldfinger, got... I remember. Doctor No, I remember because um wasn't I don't know, it was it was just kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was kind of it was the first one and it was kind of boring and i was like do i really want to continue with these yeah. uh what's the one that christopher walken was the villain oh man view to view to a kill is that the one a view to a kill or is that a different one i can't remember oh wait and christopher it, walken he, I'm, is, I'm looking this is up now. christopher walken the villain in the one that has denise richards because in my mind that's the same movie but i don't think it this is this is this is gonna bother me. This is really gonna bother me. <laughs> uh, I, like I should know this. I should know this, man. This is Christopher <laughs> freaking Walken. I almost said Christopher Nolan. I almost said Christopher Nolan. So that that would not have been good. So I'm positive Christopher Walken was a villain in in, in the franchise. I'm positive. Christopher Walken. I'm looking at his filmography and I just see the freaking poster for nine lives as I'm going through this. <laughs> God, you want to talk about bad movies. Um, Oh, geez. Oh yeah. He was an ants. I forgot about that. Um, search. No, not search and destroy. That's not a bond movie. No, that's not a bond movie. I'm pretty sure it was a view to a kill. I don't know. I don't know. Not 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 not, not that important. Have you do a kill? Yep. Yep. It was yeah. a future kill. Okay. Yeah, 1985. Yeah. Good good catch, man. Yeah, he did that there before Pulp Fiction. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, before he ever really became famous the way he is now. All right. Well, I'm glad I got that right. <laughs> uh, if I were to Zach, you forgot about Drake and Josh. I never forget about Drake and Josh. Um, are you prepared to ping the pong? <laughs> do your worst um <laughs> the uh i don't know what i forgot about drake and josh but I, they didn't have a reboot that's the only thing uh, I think of. yeah where's the where's the door hole zach <laughs> it's right there i drew with the magic marker <laughs> you were supposed to cut it out with the saw <laughs> classic classic moments man um all right we should get to our, our next yeah uh, next <laughs> topics here and then we'll we'll take a quick break from the chat you guys keep bringing in those questions uh it's been great oh, right. you guys are killing it and uh let's move on to our topic number three let's talk about this for a minute yeah um so i don't know if you remember but there was a time not too long ago where nicholas cage was kind of having a renaissance he was kind yes. of re- re- resurfacing in in the movie fandom and in the movie com- and just in pop culture in general. He um, still is. He still is absolutely still it's still a huge huge name. But there mm-hmm. was a time where it seemed like National Treasure, one of his franchises from the early aughts, was coming back. I mean, they even did a very forgotten show on Disney Plus <laughs> called oh. National Treasure. Did anyone watch it? Did Bro, you watch? I it? was. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it and reviewing it, and I'm like, 
I, there's not enough hours in the day to do this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, this looks this looks like trash. Like I'll, I'll watch. I haven't started uh, the Percy Jackson series yet either. I've been wanting to see mm-hmm. that because my boy Edge Adam Copeland's in it as uh, I believe as as Ares or Zeus. I don't remember, but um, yeah, I saw that they put out like a mini series, and I was like, nah, nah, I don't have time for that. Um, but let me tell you this much: I adore the first two National Treasure movies. They are such like they're they're just fun comfort movies for me mm-hmm. uh the first one i actually can reveal this i'm going to be reviewing the first national treasure movie this year i might review it you know sooner than you think guys um because awesome. it, it turns 20 years old it turns 20 years old this year it came out no four that's nuts <laughs> that is nuts isn't it like um i i didn't watch that one in theaters i do remember watching book of secrets in theaters and book of secrets is fun but I kind of liken these two movies to like a Home Alone sort of formula where the second movie doesn't necessarily need to exist because it kind of comes up with a really dumb reason as to why these people lose all their money from the first movie and all their riches. Uh, he has to win the girl back again. And it's like, OK, instead of stealing the Declaration of Independence, Nick Cage is sitting there going, I'm going to kidnap the president of the United States. <laughs> How ridiculous <laughs> is that? It's it's just dumb absurd ludicrous ridiculous movie making there but um i mean that's bruckheimer for you though i mean this is the same production company that partnered with disney on the pirates movies but these are these are kind of their uh redheaded stepchilds i would say uh pirates of the caribbean is extremely profitable national treasure not nearly as much and i don't know why (laughs) well i think disney agrees with you because we've gotten an update for National Treasure 3 from Nicolas Cage. And it ain't good for nope. those who wanted National Treasure 3. Because it sounds like Disney ain't going to do it. This comes to us from Collider. Uh, speaking with uh, Nicolas Cage. It says, if you were hoping for National Treasure 3, you might want to start praying for something different. If uh, star Nicolas Cage's recent comments to Screen Rant are anything to go by. In an exclusive interview, Cage was asked about the development of the film. And it's fair to say he wasn't. Uh, best thrilled about being asked as he felt the headline word eclipse the project he was there to talk about and that which uh, ended up being true because i don't even know what his project was uh the news is disappointing as producer jerry bruckheimer had previously confirmed that a script had been written but cage's comments appear to uh pour cold water on the prospect of it ever seeing the light of day because here is what he said here we go See, you're the one that brings these things up and they go out and they eclipse everything out, uh, everything else. No, there is no National Treasure 3. If you want to find treasure, don't look at Disney, okay? It's not there. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I was holding out hope for a National Treasure 3 or anything. Uh, I mean, would it be cool to see a third one? Sure. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this This news isn't really like, surprising to me in a sense i agree Uh, but i mean it's still kind of like okay nicholas cage you know people were kind of holding out hope and glorifying national treasure like to be like these amazing masterpieces of filmmaking which they're not (laughs) like they're far from it nicholas cage has far better movies in his arsenal especially in recent years but it's it's just dumb fun that's all they are but well I I do not have the nostalgia attached to it like you do. I mm-hmm. only ever saw the first one like a couple years back, not even that long ago. Never, I don't think I ever got around to seeing the second one. But um, mm-hmm. I don't think a National Treasure 3 would be a good idea. Honestly, I think it makes sense that Disney is kind of back. Like, like we mentioned before, uh, they tried bringing back the brand with a TV show that I don't even think anyone watched at all i I, disney might have even pulled it from their service i don't even know uh i never watched it i kind of forgot about it as soon as the trailer came out i didn't even know when it dropped on disney plus and people don't really talk about national treasure i mean i don't hear Mm -mm. people even in my life who talk about this in a fond way they might have watched it once when they were a kid but it's not a it's not a franchise that seems to have stuck around in a people's life who grew up with it. Maybe it's like a little bit of a fond memory, but it doesn't seem to be like a big pop cultural, you know, juggernaut. So yeah, the fact yeah. that Disney kind of squashed plans for a national treasure three, 
I'm not surprised either. In fact, I think from a business perspective, it was probably a good idea. I mean, not that these movies have to cost that much to make, but unless you're just going to throw it on Disney+, Plus, I, I don't think it would have been a box office hit. I don't think it would have done that well, honestly. No. What do you think of that? Do you think there would have been an audience for National Treasure 3? Well, I mean, you got to think about this, too. Like, just take take the audience out of the equation, right? When you put, like, it's the same thing what, that you look at uh, the reasons why a movie's being remade. When you put a sequel together and you're writing a concept for a sequel, does it warrant existing? Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe they just, Disney just doesn't have any ideas for a National Treasure 3 because there's really nowhere else for a story this ludicrous to go. You know, a guy is a treasure hunter and the map is on the back of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <laughs> like, where else can you take that? I'm going to kidnap the president of the United States. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can't really get any like higher stakes than kidnapping the president. You know, <laughs> yeah, you can't do it. Well, it's Hollywood. So if they were going to think of a stupid idea, they could have come up with a stupid idea. But as far as this idea, it sounds like they're, yeah, doesn't sound like this is going to happen. I'm not surprised it's not going to happen. Um, I think Disney is smart for not doing it, honestly. I think yeah. uh, it would have been hard to make profit on it. And I don't know. I think Nicolas Cage would be fun to see him return to something like that. But I don't know. I want to see him keep doing like weird, these weird movies that he's been doing recently like I, I i like where his career is at right now i don't really need to see him go back to national treasure like dream scenario pig, <laughs> yeah unbearable weight of massive talent come on love that one weird stuff like that you know absolutely completely agree mm-hmm. anyway guys what do you guys think of this news are you disappointed you're not going to get a national treasure three were you looking forward to one comment down below let us know all your thoughts and opinions about that guys And before we get to taking your comments and questions for the rest of the night, we're just going to crank out one final topic. And that is going to be this. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the more beloved superhero movies in the past couple of years, I would say, is Matt Reeves' take on Batman. The Batman came out uh, 2022, and it really did win fans over with its great kind of David Fincher-ish vibes to the movie. Uh, Matt Reeves direction, Robert Pattinson in the lead role, won a lot of people over when they thought he was just this like kid from Twilight. So people have eagerly and impatiently been waiting for a Batman 2. And it looks like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer because the film has just been delayed to 2026. This yeah. is what Deadline had to say about this. Uh, they said, Matt Reeves' The Batman 2 is no longer opening on October 3rd, 2025. A new launch pad for comic book movies. Instead, it is going a year later on October 2nd, 2026. So one day short of a whole year. So it's a little bit false advertisement. There. Yeah. Um, we hear the new date is due to the aftermath of the dual strikes. The spacing uh, also will give some distance from James Gunn's Superman, which is hitting cinemas on July 11th, 2025. That, that makes film, sense. Yeah. That film will kick off Gunn and Peter Saffron's new DC Studios. The film, uh, the first phase is titled Gods and Monsters. So that comes to us from Deadline. And um, what I think is interesting about this article, even more so than just the Batman being delayed by a year or just shy Mm -hmm. of a year, is the fact that the strikes are the reason why. Yeah, Because I feel like people... You know, the strikes ended. When did they end? They sent no before Christmas, right? Uh, just oh, before Christmas, I want to say it was Christmas, November. Yeah. 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 So it ended in November, and I think a lot of people thought, myself included, to some extent, that this would be the end. Like this is the end of the delays. Everything's back on track. Hollywood's going again, and I think this is just a kick in the pants reminder that that strike is going to leave a lasting impact on Hollywood for more than just a couple months. And I think yes, the Batman is. 2 is one of the first movies, but not the last movies that you're going to see come from this strike. I mean, Matt Reeves was, I don't even know if Matt Reeves had started writing the script when the strikes happened. 
and then you put that whole process off a couple of months. That is a lot of time for Hollywood and for Hollywood writers and for Matt Reeves, who already had other projects set up before the Batman was originally supposed to come out. So his schedule got all mixed up in that mess as well. I think mm-hmm. you're going to find that more than just the Batman had situations like that had effects like that i do think we're going to hear about a couple more delays for movies that we thought might have been completely fine and okay to come out on their set dates but dude the batman 2 is delayed to 2026 are you bummed do you understand how are you feeling about this this news i totally get it you know like as long as matt re and i believe in matt reeves because the batman was one of if not his best films that he's ever put out I absolutely adore that film. I haven't seen it in a while. I need to go back and revisit it at some point soon now that we're talking about this. Um, And someone in the chat said it feels like five years since the Batman came out. It really has. It felt like so much time has passed, and yet it's only been a couple years, which is nuts. Um, Like, I remember seeing that on opening night, and I remember being so freaking jazzed to be there, and everybody was jazzed to be there. That theater was jam-packed. Um. And everybody loved it. Everybody walked out loving it. It gave me a Riddler that I've been wanting to see for a long, long All time. Dana. And an iteration of the Riddler that I never thought that I would see, which is utterly freaking terrifying. Um, I love the detective aspect of that original film. Uh, and I love, okay, so even it's coming out in October, right? So that makes me think yeah. that this sequel is going to have some sort of long Halloween title in there. Or a subtitle. Mm. They might be adapting Long Halloween here. So <laughs> I think whatever it is, whatever they're cooking, I know it's going to be awesome. And giving them an extra year to give us the best movie possible. I'm fine with it. I'm not as bummed. It's, and I especially understand it given that Superman is coming out in July of 25. So it spaces those DC movies out a little bit more doesn't make them feel as fatigued in the DC universe right. because God knows. I mean, I think we're, we're only, we're getting four Marvel movies next year, right? We're getting cap three. We're, we're supposed getting, to get, yeah, we're moment. getting, we're getting cap fantastic four for sure. The third one is either Thunderbolts or blade. I don't remember which one. It won't be blade. <laughs> won't. I don't know if blade will ever it's, come out. <laughs> it's never going to be blade. Blade. But we're Thunder- never, we're never gonna Thunderbolts is supposed to be the movie, but we'll see if that even happens. Okay. They're filming it now, but we'll see. We'll see. Hey, hey, I think Thunderbolts is going to be a lot of fun. I'm I think happy. so, too. I'm excited. I'm super excited for Thunderbolts. But with the Batman 2, going back to the Batman 2, um, I am glad that they're not rushing it out. I will yeah. say that. Because it the studio could have been like, look, Reeves, we have a date, and we need to hit this date. You just scribble on that pad. You give us something and you just pump something out there. And yeah, I don't think Matt Reeves would take that. To be honest, we'd probably hear that he left due to scheduling conflicts or creative differences. If that would happen. But well, well, you know what you just laid out is pretty much the DCEU strategy for cranking out comic book movies is they just, okay, we're going to scribble out. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. All right. We need another wonder woman movie. Uh, Oh, pandemic. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll put it on HBO max. That's fine. Okay. (laughs) Pedro Pascal is Pedro Pascal busy. Okay, we'll write in a villain for him. There you go. There you go. Shoot it. Yeah. Who who cares if it's finished? You know. <laughs> so um, who cares yeah. You know, it's that that was the DCEU's mindset. Aquaman yeah. 2, don't even get me started. That movie was a piece of utter dog crap. Um, so I'm glad that the studio is kind of learning their lesson. From the past universe, it's and also not yeah, everything. whole new regime. Exactly. Yep. James yeah. Gunn. You're dealing with James Gunn now. I'm sure he's like, "Hey, man, your first movie was awesome. I'm a geek. I'm a fan. I want this one to be awesome. Take your time." I'm sure that he had some influence to that as well. But I'm honestly, I'm, I'm bummed that we have to wait till 2026 to see it because 2025 even felt like a long wait, and now it's even longer. But if this just means that we could get potentially even better quality and better writing and yeah. and more of what Matt Reeves intends to do with his vision, then yeah, take the time you need, just make it great. I'm okay with it. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, if you, if you guys are a little butthurt in the chat about having to wait an extra year, it's fine. It's yeah. totally okay. You know, 
we we, we got time on the clock. <laughs> That's the thing about movies, man. Is we hear about these delays, we hear about these things happening, and we get upset. But then we have a whole year of movies that come out that we're excited for. These we totally forget. <laughs> we got so many other things to look out for, guys. Yeah. I mean, we got Deadpool three coming out this year finally after a what six year wait. Yes. Like it's, uh, I can't freaking like ah, oh, I need that injected into my veins right now, man. Um, I cannot wait. Yeah, I did watch that trailer. That trailer is dope. Yes. <laughs> so uh, good. Oh, man. Yeah. When the claws come out in the shadow, like... Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, and, and, and it, it's perfect. Can you give me a hand? Wait, on second thought, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Put yeah. those away, please. <laughs> so good. But anyway, going back to the Batman. What do you guys think yeah. of this, of the Batman 2 getting delayed? Are you guys disappointed? Do you guys totally understand? Are you guys excited that this probably means we'll get quality over quantity? Comment down below and let us know all your thoughts and opinions on that, guys. And with that, we are just going to jump into the chat. The topics are done. They're over. Um, yeah. We're, we're going to chat with you guys, see what you guys have to say. And please, whatever you have to write in, write it in. Um, let's see here. Where did we leave off? We uh, uh, we got Flicks and Comics. What's going on? Thanks for joining us, saying, hey, y'all. Well, yeah. you thank you for joining us. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, the laser says I'm about to hit 780 subscribers and have only started my channel six months ago. That's impressive, dude. That's impressive. Congratulations, hey, man. Give me, give me a second laser. Hold on. <laughs> uh, where are you? Well, 787. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Look at yep. that. Mm-hmm. Um, says, have you but have watched YouTube since 2018. Oh, okay. You've watched YouTube since 2018. You, you joined six months. Dude, honestly, congratulations. That You should be very, very proud. Um, mm-hmm. Six months into YouTube, I think I was 100, maybe. Maybe 100, maybe 200, maybe. Um. Yeah, so that's impressive. Six months already at 780. Uh, yeah, be proud, man. Be yeah, proud. Every, that is huge. Everybody's got their own uh trajectory, and everybody yep. gets to certain milestones at their own speed. Um, I believe I don't remember how many I was at six months deep. I might have only been at like 200 something, but um, yeah, no, that's freaking impressive, man. <laughs> Good on I know, you. I know that when um we connected in 2021 i was at like 300 400 i remember yeah. that specifically because I, I, I remember going to your channel and being like oh he's around the same as me <laughs> yeah that was cool <laughs> look where so we're that, at now brother yeah crazy but yeah that's how i remember that but honestly dude that's awesome 780 subscribers six months uh amazing job dude amazing job hell yeah uh, Enviro 2 says, did you guys watch Zac Efron's Ted Bundy movie, Extremely Wicked <laughs> or something? Uh, extremely, oh, what was it? Do you know the oh. title? Extremely Wicked and Evil Ex- and Vile? Extremely, like that? extremely Wicked, Incredibly Vile and, oh man, that's going to bug me. But it, Evil, it, it, something like that, right? And Evil, Incredibly Wicked, Extremely incre- Wicked, Vile and, and Evil, incre- something like that. Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. I yeah, something say that like, was it. yeah, it was based off what the judge said to him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. But yeah, no, that was that was something that really proved that Zac Efron could do dramatic acting. Mm-hmm. If the Iron Claw wasn't enough proof for you, that's on Netflix right now. Go check it out. Yeah, it's a good watch. I thought, yeah, Zac Efron, I thought was really good in the movie. The movie itself was a little disappointed with. And I think I was a little disappointed because I had a lot of anticipation for it because it was one of those times where Zac Efron was getting out of these stupid, horrible comedies that he was, and you know, it's all subjective. Maybe you thought they were great, but I thought they were horrible. I like neighbors. Na- okay. Neighbors is, is his best one by far. And honestly, I say all this and yet I'm the one who has the guilty pleasure for Baywatch. So that's how subjective everything is. Right. So, so um, when he was coming out with this, I was so excited for him to do a, a dramatic role especially something like this so i really dove into like ted bundy and like watching documentaries and the ted bundy tapes who was the guy who did the ted bundy tapes was doing this movie so i was really excited to see how they were going to do it and 
I just was kind of let down by the movie. I just didn't think it, it held up to the promise of what it could be. Yeah. But his performance was good. His performance was definitely good, but the movie was just kind of like, eh, forgettable. I hear you there. Uh, Red Comics says, look up the Gold Coast Village Roadshow Studios to see where a lot of movies you know are made right here. Very cool, man. Very mm. cool. Um, if I Earth 2 says, who has made the better movies? Denzel Washington, Leonardo DiCaprio, or Tom Hanks? And who is the best actor of those people? <laughs> of, of Just of those three? Yeah. Well, I mean, I need, I just need to think about their filmographies now. <laughs> okay, this might... um. This might be controversial, okay. and I and I don't say this with any hate. And I'm a fan. Sometimes I feel Tom Hanks is overrated. Sometimes I, Some, I get what you're saying. I get. Sometimes what you're saying. I feel like Tom Hanks is so likable that he can kind of almost coast on just who yeah. he is in his performances. Like, like there's performances where he <laughs> does feel like he's inhabiting a character. There's also sometimes where I just feel like, eh, it's Tom Hanks playing the role the same way Tom Hanks plays roles. Mm -hmm. um, that's all. So he's honestly at the bottom of that list for me. Um, I'll, I'll give you my answer for this. Just based on sheer filmography and consistency of said filmography, it's gotta be Leo. Like I cannot on that. I can't think of one bad movie that Leo has done in his career. Tom Hanks, he's one of my favorite actors of all time, but I can think of at least a half dozen films of his that I would consider inferior and lesser than. Mm -hmm. Like the freaking uh what what should I call it? The sequels to the Da Vinci Code. Oh my god, those were boring. Those were oh, so yeah. boring. I forgot about uh, those. The I circle, about the circle boring as hell. Uh <laughs> you know. It's yeah. Say what you want about the man called Otto, but I liked it. I liked it enough. Um, I liked that one. That one was fine. Grumpy yeah. old man Tom Hanks. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes you feel old saying "grumpy old man Tom Hanks." <laughs> <laughs> him playing yeah. uh, him playing Carl from Up, basically. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it was. That's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. Carl. Um, yeah, I'm with you on that. Leonardo DiCaprio is probably my favorite and probably has my favorite movies as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right behind him is probably Denzel Washington. And then, well, yeah. like like I said, though, Tom Hanks, like I love Castaway. I love Big. I love um, Saving Private Ryan, uh, Captain Phillips. Sully, I even liked. Um, yeah. That one was good, too. And, and Man From... Like, there's a lot of good Tom Hanks. Catch Me If You Can is one of his most underrated, I think. Also in it with Leo. Yep. Yeah. Another one. Another Leonardo DiCaprio. That's right. Yeah. So. What about uh what about Philadelphia? Tom Hanks and Denzel in the same movie. Oh, I never did see that one. I haven't seen the one yet. Oh, Philadelphia is incredible. Yeah, that movie won Tom Hanks an Oscar either the year before or the year after he did Forrest Gump. He like I know there was a stretch where Tom Hanks won two best actor uh Oscars in a row. Wow. Uh one was one was for Forrest Gump and the other was for Philadelphia, the movie he did with Denzel. Yeah, Forrest Gump is Forrest Gump is probably like his most transformative performance. I would. Oh probably. yeah, like he. I think he totally his probably his best performance. In my have opinion. you have you heard like in interviews Tom Hanks talk about how he's kind of annoyed when people go up to him and quote Forrest Gump because everybody freaking does it. I could see how that would get annoying. <laughs> yeah. Like he does uh he does a segment with James Corden known as Roll Call, which I love. They act out as many of Tom Hanks's movies as they can within seven minutes. Uh and the Forrest Gump is the first one. And it's almost like he's just reading the line. Like, you know, it's like uh, obligatory. He's like, Mom always said life was like a box of chocolate. Like he was annoyed. <laughs> you know? uh, he was annoyed. He just had to get that one out of the way. But <laughs> every other movie he was fine with. But uh, uh, yeah, well, go away. We're on a bridge of spies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, there you go. Uh, Enviro yeah. 2 goes on to say, uh, there was a whole freaking movie based around Nicolas Cage, the burden of being talented or something like that. <laughs> the unbearable weight of massive talent. The burden of being talented. <laughs> Why is that a burden? The burden of being talented. I almost what like is, that. <laughs> what is so unbearable about that movie? I I really like that movie. I, I don't think I love it. 
I don't think many people love that movie. I don't think it got like the great. I don't know. I don't remember if it got the greatest reviews or not. But him and Pedro Pascal, I had a, I had a blast at that movie. Yeah, look at T listing off all of Forrest Gump's movies in the chat. You have Splash. Road to Perdition was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Road to Perdition is a really good one. That's a Sam Mendes flick. Um, Red Comics says everyone would love National Treasure 3. I'm sure Jerry Bruckheimer still wants it, so I don't know why it hasn't happened. I disagree. I don't think everyone would love it. I really I don't I don't think uh, uh I don't think it would be that popular to be honest with you. It's like it's like asking for another pirates movie. I don't really need it because we already have yeah. good ones to watch. See, I I think National Treasure is like yes, kids grew up with it, but I don't think it's one of those franchises that many of the kids who grew up with it would be like the nostalgia is pulling me and I got to watch it. Cause like this might be an unfair uh, comparison, but this is one that pops to my head. If they were to do another live action Garfield with Bill Murray and it was a continuation of the Garfield movies. Mm -mm. I -mm. really liked those Garfield movies when I was a kid. Let, let, Let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there. I am so freaking happy that this Garfield movie is a cartoon and we don't have a, you know, this gigantic CGI sun kissed idiot looking like, uh, (laughs) God, such a disgusting cat. And Bill Murray only signed on for that because he thought that the director was one half of the Coen brothers. <laughs> How idiotic. <laughs> Didn't read the whole script. And then he signed the contract blindly. I do love when they reference that in Zombieland. Oh, me too. <laughs> do you have any regrets? Probably Garfield. Gar- Garfield. <laughs> Garfield, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I could see them doing more of a reboot than I yeah. think they would do a, a, a three. I would I would see a National Treasure 3 being more like a legacy sequel than anything. Like, you could have Nicolas Cage in there, but then put in some new blood to uh, breathe mm-hmm. new life into the franchise. Like a, I don't know who's a good example. Like a Phoebe Waller-Bridge, maybe. That was just the first name that came to mind from uh, Dial of Destiny. After uh, after Indiana Jones five, I don't know if I'd want to see. Her I liked kind of Dial world. of Destiny. That's <laughs> I, that's fine, man. I'm glad you did. I I tolerated it enough, but yeah, <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of it. It is it is one of the movies of all time. It is it is one of the movies that exist for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I heard through, says, are you guys excited for the Penguin series, the Batman universe? And did you like the Gotham Fox show? I only saw mm. one episode of the Gotham Fox show. It was about a killer who attached balloons to people and they went up to the atmosphere. And I don't know why, but I, I did not get hooked based on that one, sh- one episode. So I did not see any more. And yeah. the Penguin series, I'm very excited about. I'm very excited for that show. Can't wait to see Colin Farrell again. Um, I, to answer the Gotham question, I watched all of season one. I started season two, and then I just fell off of it. Mm. I, I don't know what it was, but it was just not a show that appealed to me very much. Um, you lasted longer than I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you seen that with T, one of our beloved channel members in the chat? What's going on, man? Thanks for joining us. Says uh, Green, yeah. Zach, and Zach. Uh, Red Comics says 2025 is already very packed, so the Batman delay is completely fine. Matt Reeves uh, will still make something amazing. That is, yeah, 2025 is looking like a stacked year. <laughs> or like I said, dude, we're getting spoiled. Yeah, absolutely spoiled. I mean, 2024 looks like a. I, I mean, it doesn't look like as good of a year as last year was. Um, thinking about all the sequels that we're getting, like Gladiator Two, Beetlejuice Two, uh. Mm-hmm. I mean, crap. <laughs> lots, just, lots coming out. Lots almost, of sequels. I do feel though, like this. I don't know if you feel it, but there's like this sense in the fandom of like just wanting to get past 2024 so we can get to 2025. Like, do you feel that? Like, pe- like it, it kind Little of bit. feels like people just want to get this year over with and just get to 2025. But I mean, think about this, like. 10 years ago, people wanted to get past 2014 so they could get to 2015 with Age of Mm. Ultron and the new Star Wars movie, Force Awakens, you know? Um, And turned out that... freaking 10 years old? Oh my gosh, dude. 
Yeah. Force, Force Awakens. Awakens was so hype. <laughs> yeah. I remember. I remember. I worked at the movie theater when Force Awakens came out. That was so busy. It was so incredibly busy. I can't busy. even imagine. Yeah. But <laughs> that trailer dropped when I was in math class. Uh oh. And uh, <laughs> I remember me and my friend, we like huddled in the corner. Because we, like we were working on on a project or something, but it was also a math class where the teacher was like he could he couldn't care less. He that yeah. math class was a zoo, and and I was very happy in that moment that that math class was a zoo because what what, teacher, what kind of animals were in there? Um, well, it was just rambunctious. Like uh, oh. there was one time where the teacher was sitting, <laughs> figured as much at the desk, just not really caring, and this guy had this like. And I was someone who liked, like, when I was in class, I wanted to get the work done. And I was very focused. And I got annoyed very easily if you tried to interrupt me when I was focused on my work. Yeah. And this one kid had this, like, spray bottle. I was oh, just going no. around the whole classroom and just spraying these, everybody with the spray bottle. The teacher didn't care at all. Didn't, didn't do anything about it. And he came up to me and he started spraying me when I was doing my work. And it was just, I was, I was annoyed. Um, but anyways... Moving past that, the, the there's the setting of what this math class was like. So when my friend and I pulled out our phone uh, to watch the Force Awakens trailer for the first time because I got the notification that it dropped, uh, I was very happy in that moment that my math class could care less about what we did because it was there you awesome. Go. When Kylo Ren, I didn't even know it was Kylo Ren at the time when his when his lightsaber and and then the two uh, sides came out and I was just like, oh my gosh, Millennium Falcon at the end of that trail. I can't believe that was 10 years ago. That's blowing yeah. my mind. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Nuts, isn't it? That is absolutely insane. Wow. <laughs> one, one, of, one of my favorite trailers of all time. For yeah. sure. One of my favorite theater experiences of all time. That's for sure. Yes. Oh, Everybody man. Everybody was so into it. What so a time, man. You, okay. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a tangent, but do you think Star Wars will ever have that again? I I certainly think I would hope so. Um, I feel like Disney is definitely starting to trend to turning Star Wars into another Marvel style universe with all these intertwining narratives going in. Yeah. I love love that the Mandalorian is getting a solo film in 2026. Uh, I think it's 2026. I don't remember off the top, but I I I mean I I would hope that it can reach that height again. But Skywalker saga is over, so yeah. Who knows? I think really. I think there'll be excitement, but I don't think we'll ever see the hype like Force Awakens ever again. No. Mm -hmm. Because that was that was bringing back like Star Wars for a lot of people was Han, Luke, Leia, yeah, and that that was bringing them back, and you only get to do that once, and. Mm -hmm. Some would argue they blew their chance <laughs> with, with, with that one shot that they had to bring them back. Um, some would argue. Some would argue, I said. Um, I, but yeah. liked, I liked The Last Jedi. Come at me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why some <laughs> people yep. would argue. But um, you just, you'll just you never be able to recapture that. And you'll never be able to have a moment like that again. Mm -mm. Like it just, it just won't. That was... That was well, what, that was like four generations, maybe three generations, coming together, especially with, with after characters. the un especially after the unfortunate passing of Carrie Fisher. Like you yep. can't you can't replicate it all. So, not even just <clears throat> like the real life passings, but like they killed all the characters in the movies. Luke's gone, Han's gone, Leia's gone. We'll never we'll we'll never see them again. No, no, it's possible yeah. we'll see Ray again. I want to see Ray again. I think she's interesting. Yep, that's gonna happen. That's confirmed. It's ready to go. They're gonna Good. start shooting. But even that, I don't think will I don't think that's gonna reach the hype. Of We're gonna get Star, Star Wars, Wars, Star Wars X, <laughs> Star Wars ten. <laughs> Star Wars ten. <laughs> yeah. You gotta no, be we'll Roman see. numerals. You gotta be Roman numerals, and you gotta have a trilogy. I do honestly though, like maybe this is a little bit of a of a unpopular opinion. I don't think it is. Um it's a mistake not to call the Ray movie episode 10. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mistake no, not to call it I'm episode with you. 10. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. As much as Star Wars is a brand, the episodes are a brand. I mean, to be fair, Ray is also a Skywalker by canon. So 
I mean, you get you get Ray, you probably get a new villain thrown in there. Finn and Poe will probably come back. Uh, say what you want about Rose, but she'll probably come back. Uh, I don't know. They'll have her standing <laughs> in the background, like in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> like she didn't do anything. Nope, nope. She was just a body. She was just a body thrown in there. Uh, Enviro Earth Two says, "What are three oh, biopics?" you think would be the most interesting to see. My top three would be Donald Trump, oh, Christ. Ezra Miller, and Prince Harry. An Ezra Miller biopic would be like a live-action Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <sighs> well, I'm really excited for the Michael Jackson biopic. Me too. Me I'm really too. excited that, for that one. That movie is going to make coin at the box office. Like, serious. Like, it doesn't matter how much the movie is worth. Um, it is going to make its returns and then some, uh, because everybody like loves Michael Jackson's music and they can't wait to see his son portray him on the big screen. And Antoine Fuqua is directing it. Like, I know his track record is certainly hit or miss, but yeah. I think that movie's going to be really, really good. I, I don't know what it is. I just have a hunch. I have this, a serious hunch. This might not be the right answer to, to the question. I, I think it counts as a biopic. I yeah. want I want a disaster artist type movie oh, God. about the making of Jaws. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. I think there's a lot of comedic potential with how much went wrong on that set. Who would play Roy Scheider? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't like... know. That's, that's a good question. Could Who would you play imagine, uh, Robert Shaw? <laughs> could you imagine Will Wheaton playing uh, Richard Dreyfus? <laughs> like, stand by me. <laughs> that would be really fun. That but no, I think awesome. I think that would be really fun if they did uh, like a biopic of the making of Jaws. Because I I've always loved the behind the scenes stories and documentaries of that. that that's one of my yeah. favorites. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that would be I think that would be killer. Um, I think Universal would absolutely grab at that opportunity and that is certainly oscar contender worthy if the disaster artist is any indicator jaws turns 50 years old next year so that's a perfect time to put that movie out yes so, universal get on it um geez, please I'm just, do i'm just looking around now <laughs> like wait a minute oh, who's, oh. who's who's had an interesting life in hollywood uh george lucas George Lucas Maybe has had an interesting thing. life. I'm very surprised that we haven't gotten uh Teddy Roosevelt biopic yet. Um, I've mm. been hearing a lot of like, I'm a big history buff, right? Um, okay. I've been hearing so many rumblings about Leo playing Teddy Roosevelt. And I'm like, that's perfect. Somebody do that, please. Um, and it just hasn't happened yet. So I'd love to see that come to fruition. Um, no, geez. <laughs> um, See now I'm blanking. Now I'm blanking. I can't <laughs> Fair think enough, anybody. I can't Fair think enough. of anybody, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna take a couple more because actually, guys, uh, I am now a working man again. Yeah, I have. I have a, I've I've gotten employed. Uh, thank you to all the well wishes, by the way, and those who were supporting. Uh, I really did appreciate that over the course of my unemployment weeks. Uh, thank you I, so much for that. But can I can I say this about a Donald Trump biopic? By the way, yeah, as go for as, it. As long as he's played by Brendan Gleeson, like he was on that TV show. <laughs> Perfect. You can do that. I, I said um. Sure. I said sure. last time, I said, um, oh, crap, what's the guy's name now? Oh, I can't remember what his name is now. The The guy from uh, Top Gun 2 and uh, anyone Glenn you. Powell? Yes, as a younger, as a younger Trump. <laughs> you do oh, Glenn Powell. God. No, <laughs> no. I mean, I feel like if you were to do a Trump film, it would be a cautionary tale. Uh, a you cautionary would just have an old... tale. You would have an older version of Trump like the entire time, and you would just say, Hey guys, don't do this. Don't, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, That's no, good. um, we're yeah. gonna take a couple more because I do have to jump off uh here Ooh. pretty quick so that I can Jacob Jacob well. Hubbard with a good one, an Ozzy Osbourne Ooh. biopic. Ooh, oh, where's that? That would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, that's a good pick. 
Mm-hmm. Speaking of Jacob Hubbard, here he is right here. What's going on, Jacob? Thanks for joining us. Says, uh, hello, boys. Uh, Scar Joe being offered <sighs> the main role for New Jurassic movie. Everything they add to this movie most anticipated. Is that tr- Scarlett well, Johansson has been offered the lead role in the Jurassic Park movie? Well, if that's true, then it doesn't even need to be a Jurassic Park movie. Jacob Hubbard will just run to the theater if it's Scarlett Johansson. That's so interesting. I never would have thought that they would go for uh, a bigger name like that. Interesting. Damn. It, it kind of awesome. makes me think that they're not going to do the smaller movie like I thought they might go. They're probably going to make this a pretty big <clears throat> blockbuster event. Interesting. Okay. Absolutely. I did no. not know that. Well, it's a, Jurassic, it's a Jurassic movie. You have to make it a big event. I just... I feel like they tried to go so big in Dominion, not Dominion, uh, the Jurassic World movies in general. Uh, yeah, Dominion. Um, I just don't know how they go bigger than that, and I'm worried for them to go bigger than that because I thought Dominion sucked. <laughs> and I just I thought it was I. Right. It was I. Right. It was all right. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Um, I, I <clears throat> locust was. I was. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> so I just, I just, I wonder where they're gonna go. I wonder where they're gonna go. Time will tell. Uh, Invite Earth 2 says, what's your favorite Andrew Garfield movie outside of Spider-Man? Mine would be 99 Homes. Uh, TikTok Boom was okay and haven't seen Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge would probably be my pick. I love uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, God. I hate saying this. Like This is not a knock on Hacksaw Ridge, but it's got to be Tick, Tick, Boom for me. Uh, just because of how utterly impressive Andrew Garfield was. And he's impressive in Hacksaw mm-hmm. Ridge, but it's like, okay, you were in an action movie. I kind of expected you to be great in this. Tick, right. Tick, Boom is, Tick, Tick, Boom is a musical, man. And Andrew Garfield has to sing. I had no clue he could yeah. do that. Like, so that Neither performance. Did he, apparently. <laughs> yeah. That performance came so out of Let's Field. So that would be what I would pick. That's my favorite Andrew Garfield uh, film. That's a good one. That, that's definitely my top three. If not my, if not my second favorite. Now put um, that out on Blu-ray, Netflix yes oh my gosh please do the right thing streaming sucks man they just <laughs> like just, yeah. just give us physical media please along with the uh whatever that's a whole other conversation yeah. uh enviro 2 says harry potter tv show is also out in 2026 do you think people oh. will boycott gee do i think people will boycott a movie or you a think? tv show that they're already boycotting <laughs> you think they're gonna boycott a tv show that is uh you know based off of books written by a transphobe yeah no of course people are gonna boycott it but i'll tell you this much as a big Harry Potter nerd myself, I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy, by the way. Uh, I'm nice. through the, some of the story. I just got the PS5 not too long ago, so I'm finally getting a chance to go through the story. I will be reviewing Hogwarts Legacy when I'm done with the story, so stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> if they want to make a TV show and they want to get into more details that weren't uh, delved on in the original movies with Daniel Radcliffe, fine they can do whatever they want i'll watch it it's harry potter um i will especially not boycott it if they cast adam driver as snape like i need that in my <laughs> life i need that shit in my life man i don't think there's any way you're gonna get adam driver to do that show <laughs> and why not why not why not you throw a bunch of money at him he looks exactly Maybe. like alan rickman like come on come on Maybe. It's, okay it's, it's too easy fair enough i don't have much of a rebuttal but I don't know. It just seems like too. I don't know. It's a it's a dream casting for sure, and those are really hard to come by. Yeah, I mean, the only dream casting I think I've ever actually seen come to come like into the light. Uh, oh crap! I'm blanking on the first one that I was just thinking about. But uh, John Krasinski's appearance in uh, Multiverse <laughs> of Madness. <laughs> Because that was like a no way you're gonna that get was a him. Joke. It was meant it, it, he was cast in that role because it was meant to be a punchline to a joke. Um, but it was also and- to fulfill the fans' dream casting, like it was it was a studio looking at what fans wanted and being like, "All right, we'll give it to them for a little for a little time. We'll and give that- it to them. We'll see how it works, and then we'll cast Pedro Pascal because he's a bigger star." <laughs> But there was that's, oh that's man that's what they did. <laughs> that's what they that's did. That's fair. That's that's fair. There was oh there was a bigger one though yeah. that I was like 
everyone wanted him and then they got him and i can't remember who it was but Yo, anyways by the way by the way can i just talk real quick about that fantastic forecast because i love pedro yeah, pascal go for it. in that i love pedro pascal in that part vanessa kirby was one of my top picks for invisible woman i love that evan moss Bachrock, i already talked about how did i not think about joseph quinn for the human torch how did i not think about him eddie munson mm. from stranger things like <laughs> that is too perfect that is yeah. way too perfect. He's a hothead. Of course. I was thinking the actor of Steve for Human Torch. No. Nope. And then Joseph yeah. Quinn is kind of a similar similar look. Oh god, I'm blanking on his name now. I'm so sorry, but yeah, no, the actor who plays Steve, I feel like he'd be a better Harry than he would a Human Torch. Mm. You know, just cuz he looks Yeah, that's fair. Cut. Yeah. That's he looks fair. like he could oh. be a rich kid. Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury. That's who it was. Because they they literally drew Samuel Jackson in the comics yeah. as as Nick Fury, and then they actually ended up getting Samuel Jackson as Nick. That's the one I was thinking of, where it was like they specifically wanted him and they got him. Of course, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't happen as often. Fan no. castings, it doesn't happen very often at all. Adam Driver as Snape, please. I need that. <laughs> I'm, I know I want that by the way. Now that you've put that image in my head, I definitely want that. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that with Tia saying congratulations? Jacob Hubbard saying congrats on the job. Told you to get another one. Well, thank you guys so much for that. Thank you guys so much. But yes, um, yeah, because I do have a job now and it's a job where I am required to get up earlier than I used to have to. We are gonna Gross. have to cut the show pretty uh pretty soon here. Uh Dan reviews there. What's going on, Dan? Thanks for joining us. Says just joined the stream, but heard you got a job. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you very much, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, we'll take uh, we'll take this one. Uh, Jacob Hubbard, I wanted to see a biopic of Zach Kohler's acting career when he hits big. When Jacob Hubbard directs a movie with him in it, now that's my my fan casting. That's my fan dream. <laughs> I'll be Let's there. talk. Let's talk. I'll fly out. We'll do. We'll 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 get it done. We'll get it done. I hope that actually happens, man, because that would be amazing to see. Uh, this will be our last one we'll take. Uh, Envire Earth 2 says, Dwayne Johnson, is he underrated or overrated? What do you think, man? That that doesn't deserve an answer. He's just uh, he's just a brilliant soul. Uh, you know, <laughs> I guess he knows what a good movie is. I mean, I, I kind of resent him for not putting over Shazam. Uh, but it's... Uh... Yeah, I um, mean, he's not no no human being is perfect, but I still love him. I still love The Rock. I will definitely say I don't think he's underrated. <laughs> I don't think he's underrated, but overrated. The thing is, is that if you if you were looking at him as an actor, overrated, I'd say yes. But I don't really think of him as not not to disrespect, but I don't really think of him as an actor. I think he's he a wrestler. Is a, he he's a he's a specific. He's an action star. Like he is yep. specifically a movie blockbuster action star. And in that niche, he does it very well. He's like, I've compared him to be like the Bruce Willis of our generation with how he's been picking his projects. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. Like, that's a good, you know, a that's lot good of one. like, he does a lot of action movies. He's, he's bald. He's in skyscraper was basically diehard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not not a Christmas movie either. So yeah, it's definitely <laughs> definitely, definitely not a Christmas movie. Yeah, definitely likening after Die Hard because that's not a Christmas movie either. But um, <laughs> all right, uh, yeah. and with that, guys, uh, yeah, I I'm sorry, I got to jump off here. I should had really to, make sure had I to end it on that. Time. We had to end it on that exactly, man. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, filling up this chat this was awesome this was great uh Hell thank yeah. you so much to my guest zach guller for being here where can the people find you man let them know plug your stuff you can find me at zach guller on twitter slash x whatever you want to call it in god's year 2024 um I, my name zach guller is just that's how you find me on youtube i am on the road to 2000 subscribers so any help towards that goal would be much appreciated Got a lot of uh, awesome content hitting the channel. I'm going to go watch Love Lies Bleeding tomorrow. Can't freaking wait. Uh, I've got a lot of retro content coming out. I mentioned Collateral on his 20th anniversary. I mentioned National Treasure on his 20th anniversary. I'm going to make Zach feel old again by saying Big Hero 6 on its 10th anniversary. Oh, um, man. So a lot, lot, lot happening. And it's going uh, to be a fun time over here uh, on Zach Goler's channel. So... 
if you're new, hit the subscribe button. Go over to my channel. It's super easy. It's a big red button. Go ahead and smash it as hard as you can. Hit Zach Milne Talks Movies channel subscribe button as well because you know he deserves it. He absolutely does. Ah, oh, thanks, man. And yeah, mm -hmm. no excuses, guys. His link is in the description below. Go click on his channel name. Go on over there. Subscribe. There's really no excuse as to why you can't. Just go do it. Just do it. He's awesome. Yeah. And if anything, I think he's proven that during tonight. And uh, yeah, tons of content over there. That's amazing. So always appreciate oh, you, yeah. dude. Honored to have you uh, back on here. And as for the channel here, guys, I don't think I'm seeing anything this weekend. But, uh, you know, something might pop up. <laughs> but we will be back. Sorry? You're telling me you're not going to watch Arthur the King. Is that that dog movie? Yes. Oh, <laughs> the dog movie okay. With Mark, with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Maybe. I might go see Arthur, Arthur the King. Keep keep your eyes open for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll he almost, almost went into the Boston accent, too. Yeah, you see what I did there? <laughs> I, I pulled back when I realized I can't do accents. Uh, mm -hmm. But thank you again to Movie Refuse with Ryan Lane and Rid Comics for the Super Chats. Really appreciate that. We will be back again next week, guys, with the solo shows. Same exact time. Same Zach channel. Appreciate ya.